And welcome back to Scavtech, everyone. Today's episode, we're going to be discussing Tarkov TV that just occurred probably no less than 24 hours ago. So, very fresh material. A lot of stuff was said. Pretty excited to talk about that. Followed by some ramblings about other miscellaneous topics. The bulk of the cast is probably going to be Tarkov TV, but we got a few other tidbits, pieces here and there snuck in. So, Giga. Yes. It Hello. happened. Tarkov TV. It did kind happen. A, kind of a quick little thing. Like, it, you know, Nikita mentioned it, what, less than five days ago, maybe? Hmm. Yeah, I think so. He said, oh, it, Tarkov TV is around the corner. Um, and then, yeah, we were kind of waiting. I was, like, not sure because it got to, what, like, Thursday, I think? Mm -hmm. And I was just like, is this coming? I'm not sure if this is coming or not. And then, yeah, on Thursday, he announced that it would be on the Friday. So, yeah, later on in the week, but that's fine. It's okay. So, yeah, quick little turnaround. Uh, we haven't had one for a while. We definitely yeah. haven't had one since the you know, unheard blow up. So it was, you know, hotly anticipated, I guess. Like the only time we'd seen him before that was on that arena cast. That so wasn't <clears> really, you know, they're mostly speaking to the devs and stuff. There was like, as yeah. I said, you know, there was like four segments of about 10 minutes where he was actually talking about, yeah. You know, the situation and stuff and like we haven't mm. seen him since so this was yeah it was cool and interesting for that reason um to see kind of like how stuff had changed or whatever but um yeah i mean he he, he brought he brought the goods brought the goods got a lot of a lot of good stuff where where should we even begin where should we even begin i've, I've got like a list <laughs> oh, of, Lord. of interesting things i don't know whether yeah. we focus on that because like i haven't had a chance so i was just saying to church before this started i literally like did the stream we watched the cast and then I stood up and like I had loads, I had, you know, I had, had like dinner to go to with my family and then loads of stuff on today. So literally I've like sat down for the first time, thought again about like, okay, I haven't been able to like go back and watch it. There was some parts that I still have like some question marks over because I haven't had a chance sure. to go back and watch everything. But um, obviously we've watched it all through the first time and uh, just, yeah, just, just, just do our best. I've got like, I, mean, I can actually like pull the tapes if there's anything like really important that. <laughs> needs you have to be, the uh, you have the receipts. To, I, have, I have the receipts because <laughs> I have I have my my stream recording open on the side and like timestamps for most of it throughout because I usually do that just it makes it easier to like edit <clears throat> stuff later. Um, so we'll see. But there's yeah you know, maybe there'll be a few things we miss here and there because it's just like there's so much. Some mm -hmm. of it is less like oh you know there's some new clothes and stuff like I'm I'm not really talking about that kind of thing. Um, so what is probably like let me, let's think like what's probably the most interesting thing I guess like. Mm. I guess like features. Oh, let's let's how about let's begin here. Let's begin here with the with the next wipe. So the next wipe yeah. is 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 in August. For those of you who didn't hear already, even though it's like plastered literally every of you, you know, if you so much as <laughs> open social media and you've ever looked at Tarkov before, I'm sure that someone is uh <laughs> I'm sure that someone will have, have shown you, you know, that it's that it's in August. It's gonna be early August as well. Don't really know what that means. Presumably earlier than halfway through August. Um when did they when did they wipe last time? So I've got the I actually have the list of all of the wipes in a little notepad here, just because we often end up using it. They wiped on the tenth last year when they gave us a surprise late wipe. The tenth of August twenty twenty three. That was mm. patch thirteen point five. So yeah, maybe that would be around the same time uh, as that. That that's early August, so you know that seems to work for them for whatever reason. That'll be a Saturday, so who knows? It could be it could be slightly earlier, it could be slightly later. Eighth or eighth is the Thursday before. Fifteenth is the um, Thursday afterwards. Doesn't need to be Thursday, but obviously the meme. So uh, <laughs> so yeah, so that's that's good. And the only thing about it's good to know, it's it's quite late, right? Like we've got all of June, all of July. We've got part of August to go. That's like two and a bit months remaining in this wipe. This wipe's economy is already cooked as hell because <laughs> of Bitcoin. You know, every time you get one out yeah. of the GPU, GPU uh, machine, it's like a million rubles. Like I've like barely been trying for a month and a bit and I've got 150 mil. Like you just, you, ca you can't help yourself but make money, right? Um, and all the items, because of, because of that, all the items are inflated in price on the fleet. Yeah. So anything you pick up is got, you know, is worth tons of money. So the whole thing is just crazy. So I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll see. I like. I was hoping it would be the end of this month. I feel like a, a month would be better timing. Like we, there's still like a month of life left in this thing. But I think by the time that we get to the beginning of August, I really think it's going to be quite like you know we're really you know needing this this update. 
um especially thinking as a creator right that i'm just like looking forwards to like nine weeks of content just thinking like what am i gonna do um yeah we'll make it work we always do but yeah we'll, we'll see so it's it's gonna be quite late on um august white for those of you who are planning it's nice that they've told us decently in advance um i could basically plan my holidays this year around like avoiding <laughs> june july <laughs> august if I, if at all possible because i got burnt so badly last year um so yes yeah, so, so we're getting that and it sounds like there's a bunch of stuff coming um in in that exactly what's coming where again i need to go back and like listen to the section that he said about it but there is a roadmap i guess that's the second best place to oh to that's begin. right didn't didn't they said they were going to release, have it? release it yes do you have it i'll send it no i don't, I don't think i do okay i'll just i'll just discord it so you can like show it up it doesn't actually show that much it doesn't actually show that much and it does it does say you know there are quite a few other patches that are coming so there mm-hmm. is going to be other stuff it's not like this is like that was kind of the problem with 2013 was that it was basically end game for two months <laughs> nothing happened they were just cooking up for patch for patch 14 which we knew was like you know gonna be it was 13.5 i guess um which was like it was the, that was the short patch that was actually quite fun and they had like all of patch 14 to come in December so it was that was just like really really dry period of Tarkov um, whereas this one it's like you know as, as it, if you can see you'll be able to see it on, on the middle of the screen if you're on audio only then there's like a couple of things it's like June 2024 um, both Tarkov and Arena there's the Arena integration so that's basically the next thing that's coming which has player level and XP synchronization so what that means is I believe that everybody in Arena has skills of level 30 to make it <laughs> fair and balanced but when you gain xp in weapon mastery you know endurance strength whatever that transfers over to your main character so it doesn't affect your arena character because it is kind of silly to have skill leveling in arena Mm -hmm. we all decided right like everybody started at level zero and just didn't go up in levels because the skill leveling system is just not fit for purpose in arena so they made it fair but then it transfers over to eft which is cool um same with player skills mastering um and this new trader um the arena ref who is gonna be it's, it's gonna be interesting there's like a quite a few different mechanics involved around him i mean it says special in-game quest there's like a few things to touch on it's like kind of hard to know where to go first but yeah so you will first and foremost you'll be able to transfer stuff from arena into the base game we knew this already you'll be able to transfer money back and forth from arena pvp and you'll be able to transfer money from arena to pve but not back from pve you can't just farm up in PvE, mm-hmm. move it because technically, right? You'd be able to move it from PvE into Arena and then move it into PvP. So, like, <laughs> yeah. you'd be able to like launder cash back, like, back into the base game <laughs> right. from PvE. So that's that's why that link is not enabled. Um, so, which I just kind of thought about now, which does make sense. But you can absolutely transfer back and forth on the online versions of the game, if you yeah. will. Okay, yeah. Because I I wasn't sure about that. There was some question about that. Uh, yes, exactly. And he said that the there would be a, a limit, but he said it would be ample. I mean, here I think is only 500k, which doesn't seem that much. But he said it would be, you know, decent. So maybe like these are like work in progress things, weren't mm-hmm. they? So uh, mm-hmm. who who knows? I mean, they'll, they'll change it over time. Um, and and yes, there is a cost as well. There's like um a, some kind of fee to like move stuff backwards and forwards. So I don't know. Um, we'll just have to see. So then there's also, as you can see in the screenshot, there's uh, cases as well. There's these like new cases that you can transfer, so you can like win. There's like weapons. One looks like a weapons case. One looks mm-hmm. like a lucky scav junk box, and you can win those in arena. Move them over to base EFT, and then you have to unlock them in the workbench. You have to have a certain level of workbench to unlock them, and it's like a five minute craft, which is kind of neat. Like I quite like it as a thing. I'm like, okay, that's that's fine. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Did they post the? I don't know. There was a clip on the actual stream, but I don't know. I don't know where exactly that was. Oh, here it is. Here it is. I thought they, I thought I had. Oh, here it, it is. Good. Yeah. Um, so this is workbench level three. So I don't know. Like it doesn't really show. Okay. Interesting. Who knows what the requirements are? Maybe it's level two. Maybe it's level three. Not not sure. This is just a max hideout workbench, so it's hard right. to tell. Um, but so you, you have to put like, like put them a little craft. Right. Yeah. It's it's like it's you got like a couple different like there's a red screwdriver. A long screwdriver and like a drill. These are all marked with the blue uh, tool icon, so you get them back, and then you put in the new arena mm-hmm. item, whether it's weapon case or checkbox. The 
the, the items that like a Tarkov SPT mod because they're like cut, they've been like modified like uh, with like a decals on them. Like one's like a blue, I don't know what it is, and then the other one's like purple. So it's it just like it almost yeah, it's like looks a blue like, skull thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it almost is like out of place, you know. I I know what you mean. Yeah, um, I think that blue thing is is that the what are they called like Lega medals or something? <laughs> oh, the the yeah yeah. I think That's I'm, these. these yeah. So there's, so there's <sighs> yeah. two new currencies. I say new, but there's two currencies for Arena outside of just rubles. There will be GP coins and uh, and these like Lega Le- Le- medals. I, I can't remember how he said it, but um, it sounded like GP coins are getting like entirely reworked and are going to be purely in Arena. And I guess you probably pick them up in Tarkov as well, but the drop rate is going to be like way higher in Arena and you'll be mm-hmm. able to like barter them for stuff. There was like a ton of barters for GP coins specifically. And some of them were like quite a lot. It was like 32 GP coins because they're going to be different. I guess you're not going to be able to sell them to therapists for like 32K anymore or whatever, it's 30K. And uh, and then there was these like Liga medals as well, which seemed to be like mm-hmm. super high end stuff. There was like, I don't know, maybe you got to do like a full challenge or a quest or like win one or whatever. They seem to be like the rare token. So there's like two new two new things like that in Arena, which is kind of, yeah, that's kind of okay. Um, I guess we may as well touch on it now while we're talking about it. There's like, there's keys as well. There's like different keys um, to rooms that you'll only be able to open if you've got the key from Arena. Like, I kind of get it, right? They like, they they pulled back a lot from the esports talk about Arena and said like, oh, you know, well, it was always supposed to be part of the main game, blah, blah, blah. I, f- I feel like they're just like reframing it, um, which is yeah. fine. Like, they're, they're, they're fine to do that, right? They've tried to do the esportsy thing, but... I guess either they realized like their pace wasn't quick enough. They didn't put enough tournaments. Like, it just wasn't ready for that. Um, and they, because they kind of missed the boat, they're trying to integrate it more into the main game, which I think is fine. I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that. Um, and they're incentivizing people to play with you. You can win stuff for real Tarkov by playing arena. And so yeah. that might get, that will get more people playing definitely without question, right? People will go and play it to, to grind the stuff, to go back to EFT with the things like they're, they're going to do that to get all the keys. Like people are just going to play it for that for that reason so um, you can and... only get certain keys Correct. Like I'm, I'm a little confused on the wording like is it is it that room you know dorms 318 doesn't spawn on tarkov only spawns via the trader that you have to get farm items in arena for that's what i'm a little that, unclear that was about. the implication that it was yeah that it was like a barter from like you know either lega medals or gp coins or something that mm-hmm. You know, but maybe you won't only be able to get them in Arena, but like that's like the intended path to get these things. It'd be like Arena Gladiators Room and stuff like that. But they're like special rooms. Okay, so they're it's like new content. It's like... I think yeah, they're like new rooms that we'll don't have exist. To see, they're not like but... yeah, they're not like relabeling old rooms. So they've said. I mean, who knows, right? We we don't. Yeah. We will never really know until it comes in. Right. It's not it's my favorite thing in the world. I'll say that. Um, but, yeah. Uh, I get. I get what they're going for. I suppose. Yeah, and like, you know, they have every right to try and get more people into Arena, you know, spend a lot of time on it. Um, people don't want to play it for a variety of reasons. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know whether... Is this coming later? I don't know. It's not actually on the list for Arena Yeah, I don't think... Oh, no, it is. It is. It is. I think people will be more incentivized to play this, like, later on in July. Anyway, let's, so let's, let's just carry on. Maybe we'll touch on more on some Arena stuff. Um, in a little as we get onto the next section but so then there's an arena patch with pmc outfits from ragman and a unique item that's also in june apparently but i don't think people will care about that too much and then we've got um an act it, it says like it says june 2024 eft patch expansion and bonuses for edge of darkness and unheard edition and pv matching improvements on the roadmap which i'm i'm not sure exactly i think this is he's saying like they're working on the stuff that they said they were good give people like the scav, you know, the scav dongle, whatever it's going to be, you know, to stop scavs from shooting at you from distance, and and the BTR button and the the panic panic button for bringing your you know the Avengers in, like those, those things. I guess they're working on, and that I think is what he means. Above that, though, it says like ETS Unity 2022. It seems not necessarily connected to these patches. I think it's because maybe they don't know when that's coming, but they are going to put ETS into sorry, they're going to put Unity 2022 into ETS. Um, so people could test it or whatever, and then that's going to give them more tools. You know, we won't see anything immediately about that when it comes in, as they always say, but it'll give them more flex to, more tools in the workbench to be able to work on the game a bit better, which is good. And it'll be nice, actually, that they're on the, basically, the updated version of Unity um, 
like now i i, cause I, th- I thought he said 2023 at one point but um apparently he did say 2022 and but i actually spoke to a friend who like works with unity and he said oh he said i don't really think that there are like I, the 2023 versions I don't think they're like fully like fully supported or whatever for for some reason i didn't really get the technical ins and outs so he was like yeah 2022 is like the most updated one most people are using oh, okay so anyway, so then again, it was still in June, by the way. This is like the fourth box in the mm. list. Another one, EFT patch. Um, this also says expansions and bonuses for EOD and TUE. Uh, armor system adjustments, which he did talk about. PV, AI improvements, and balancing changes. So the armor system, um, he said basically they're, in, they're buffing armor. So they're going to cover some of the armpit with the front plate. Like the, each plate is going to have a wider hitbox. Oh, really? It just, yeah, they're just like increasing the size of it. I, th- I think he said also something to do with the uh, the collider for every type of armor in the same location was going to be identical or something, I think. So he said they were going to simplify it, um, if I remember correctly, precisely what he okay. said. So it sounded like, you know, a side plate is going to be a side plate. A front plate is just going to be a front plate. Like maybe every plate will be a sappy plate. <laughs> That's what I would do if I was them. It doesn't need to be like a do- freaking diamond, right? Like, who who cares? Like, and you can't even tell in the game, like, unless you me or Airwing, you, know, you and you go in and you like shoot the points and you do. Yeah. Like, the, the only real way, because the only, and even then, right, it's hard to tell mm-hmm. because sometimes, especially when people turn, like the models and the hitboxes like distorts. So sometimes it's hard to know. Like the armor areas go in weird places, and um, the only way that you can really tell with this stuff is you you find a weak spot, like you go just off the edge of the diamond and you shoot it, and then the person is in their hideout and they swap armor without moving and you don't move and then you shoot them again and it hits the plate that's like really the only way to tell to be like completely consistent because it's like oh no none of us moved and they had that armor on and now they dropped it and they put the other one on because it was in their bag and then mm-hmm. and now it doesn't get hit like it's, it's so difficult to even test right and the game doesn't tell you like where you got hit whether you got hit on the plate or not like it's right. it's just so hard to, to know so it doesn't remove any immersion at all by just making all the plates the same. It removes a little bit of like, oh, maybe I'll pick this plate over that plate because like that plate looks better or whatever. Like, but who cares? Mm-hmm. Like most people I think I think this is a good call because people are so disengaged with the armor system. Yeah. As I said, like people literally just buy a Bagari or a Corrund mm-hmm. and they just run it. Like they yeah. don't like people don't care. There's like only a few people who fuss with the armors and um and I'm one of them. And of us, most of us just go five four or six five or mm, two gax mm. or whatever and you're mainly managing weight more than anything else like yeah. i don't care about throat anymore you know it's just like most people just don't care like most most of the reason why they wanted to put this in people just aren't engaging with it the way they want to do so it's good that i think they've realized that and that they're going to simplify it so this is good yeah and I, I'm, I was like pleasantly surprised that the the key to brought that up and uh mm. it's you know we I mean we just talked about it but last week so uh yeah I think- yeah I think it's a good thing overall, and uh, mm-hmm. hopefully, it's more. It doesn't have to be like, yeah. I think it's like too realistic, <laughs> and that's kind of the the downfall of it, in my opinion. Is like it's, yeah, you know, it's just not super. It, at least how they set it up, like I don't know. I, I I guess like one tweet they could do is the Gax, like just nerf them, and maybe that would like, and maybe buff some other like less yeah. use plates. But, you know, if you're adhering to real life, then maybe you can't do that. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, really, they should just change the the, the craft or something to something else. Like, get, allow you to craft, like, I don't know, yeah. a defender or something that comes with, like, some crappier plate. Because, like, that's the thing about the, the Gax is that they're, but like, you can't do that because the, best the defender plate. comes with this plate in real life, you know. Well, but that's the thing. It doesn't come with the GAC. So it's... Mm-hmm. Uh, like, like just put it, just saying. put it to a different armor that comes with like make it allow you right, to craft like right. a you know gem four or something like and it's mm. anything that comes with like a one of the bulkier plates to make the the bulky plate the craft plate because this is that's the issue right that's the game balancing issue with the GAC plate is that like the best plate in class five by a mile is the one yeah. that you can just craft basically for free in the hideout which is just like insane it just like negates the yeah. value of all the other plates it's just stupid right it's like it's just game breaking there was only one plate really. And it's that one. Like you end up with just like tons of plates from random armors that you have to buy from, you know, you bought a, an Osprey or whatever, and you end up with like the tall com, like five kilo beast. And you're like, yeah. what am I going to do with that? Like I've got Gax that weigh one I, kilo and they're basically the same. I had an item box full of Gats uh, and yeah. some, and I just sold every other five. Mm. That's why I play because I was like, I'm never going to use these. Like, yeah, they're, they're so much more by comparison. They're so much more worse. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
So, do, 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 do. so then there's another June patch, apparently. This is on like the next line. Purchasable PvE mode for all editions, which is good. Um, that's actually interesting. Let's let's touch on that now because that link mm-hmm, that like mm-hmm. spirals off into a few other of these topics. This roadmap's good actually. It's like it's you know we're, yeah, we're picking on the yeah. salient points, and then we can go and backfill through the list of things we haven't touched in here because there's loads of stuff that's not talked about on this roadmap. Mm-hmm. So purchasable PvE mode for all editions. My gut instinct to that is like, oh, why is that like the fifth patch down the line? Like, surely they should do that now. But no, because one of the big updates to PVE that Nikita mentioned was, oh, yeah, we've been thinking about it. And 70% of players who are playing PVE mode are playing solo. So we're forcing everybody to use our servers. Maybe we are actually going to do the work of changing the... This is the work that, by the way, he said, oh, it's too much work to do. To change the infrastructure of our just setup so that people can play on their local machine. And then he's looked at the numbers and gone, okay, 70% of people are playing PvE. Don't know how many people that actually you know, means. Who knows, right? Let's say it's like 50,000 or whatever. That means mm-hmm. you've got like 35,000 people playing on their servers, which could be used for actual real game servers, right? They're, I guess mm-hmm. they're sort of interchangeable. This is an obvious thing for him to spend time for his teams to work on because they are, they both, like, that burns them money. Real money, yeah, right? I see what having you're servers, saying. like act, like this is a real win. Like I'm, I'm not surprised they've done this because you know you you cut that out the server cost from all like seventy percent of the people playing PV mode. You're actually saving yourself real cash, and it's like mm. he's highly incentivized to do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like why why wouldn't you? It's it's crazy not to. So mm. I think he's realized the uh, the error of you know. Because he said before, like, oh no, it's gonna to be too much work, blah blah blah. But it's just like, well, is it too much work to free up like you know, 30k's worth? And it's not it's, it's not too much person. work when it's gonna save me a bunch of money, basically. Correct, yeah, right? Yeah. It, you know, you could take like you know, I take a sort of not not it's not necessarily a cynical view, but it's like maybe he didn't think about that too much before. Um mm-hmm. and now he's gone, okay, because because so many people are playing on their own on PvE, mm-hmm. uh, it just it makes sense, right? Because you've got however many people and and those people are like occupying, you know, a full game world yeah yeah like it's it's pro- you probably it probably isn't much less work to run a full server of 10 people on ground zero wherever than it is to run one guy with pmc ai mm-hmm. right i don't know it's like arguably it might even be more difficult um so well, that would be interesting to... too because sorry to interrupt you but it occurred mm-hmm. to me that that means that the performance overhead should increase on the end user meaning that Mm. Now your system is going to solely be uh, responsible for AI um, logic or, or whatever goes on. Yeah. This mysterious <laughs> nebulous code that I know nothing about. Yeah, exactly. Whereas like ha- part, you know, part of it was offloaded to the servers and you would just be receiving the packets and sending them, et cetera. Exactly. Technical jargon. Look at me, word salad. <laughs> <laughs> So that might have a detrimental effect on people's PV performance if they don't have a very good machine. Like, I don't really see any difference mm-hmm. between online and, like, offline on my own PC modes until mm-hmm. you press, like, Horde, right? You have to put on, like, yeah. a ton of AI to see a big difference. But usually it works, like, fine. Because I've play, I played enough, like, I've played enough offline solo. Because that, that, this exists already. This is, like, what a lot of people's argument was in the first place. It's like, they already have, like, most of what they need to do this because... You can click the button and play offline by yourself on your own PC mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. So, like, how much more work is it to just like add a bit of progression to that? Like, is it really that difficult? Um, like, surely not. Like, it, and obviously, it's worth worth them doing. But um, you know, it will tax people's systems more. You would imagine. So, but we'll we'll see. I don't know. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll mm-hmm. see. So, that's probably also the reason why. They are not, and I think maybe he did say this actually. That's the, also the reason why they're going to do because they're working on that now. So they've got to do that first before they can then let everybody else buy PVE, because otherwise they're going to get even more people joining PVE and making the queues even longer. Because the queue, he did, you know, he was quite honest about that that the queues were really bad in PVE. Um, you know, they had to have shorter PMC raids in PVE as well to like you know allow more people to get in. But it takes you a long time to get into a match because they just don't have enough servers and. And don't necessarily want to invest in it if they're going to do this, you know, make this update. Mm-hmm. They have to do that first, and then they're going to make PvE purchasable for everybody. Um, if you're playing like multiplayer, like co-op, or whatever, like you will still be on their servers. But as you yeah. said, it's going to cut down seventy percent of server use, so it's going to be a, kind of a win for everybody. Um, quality of life improvements, you know, that's probably part of the other stuff we're going to talk about, and the in-game pulse. This is part of what Pestily 
was asking him about, do the polls in game, stop doing polls on Twitter. Like if you do a poll on Twitter, you ask people on Reddit, if you, you know, look at YouTube videos from content creators, like all of those things are like specific subdivisions of yeah, the community. Yeah. Like it's none of them are perfect. Um, some people don't use Twitter X. Some people right, don't right. use Reddit. Some people don't watch content creator videos. So as people said, he, they needed to have that in the launcher or mm -hmm. in-game or somewhere, right? That's like mm -hmm. visible and obvious that people can like engage and they'll get, they'll get more votes as well that way. Yeah. But yeah. they'll get a broader selection of, of the community then yeah. rather than just people who are like highly engaged on the social media. It's like the people that, they're more likely to get people like you and me. Um, mm -hmm. Right. When they put it on like Twitter or whatever because yeah. a lot of people are like much more disconnected. So that's good. Then we get, we've finally managed to leave June. We're into July now. Uh, this is Arena, so there's a new map, uh, which I think he showcased it, and it's called Sky Bridge, and it is actually a train station. We speculated about this before from the picture that they posted, because it looked like there was, like, times or whatever. It could be, like, it could be an airport terminal or whatever, but it does actually look like it's a train station. There's a new map for that. <laughs> and the exciting part about this update, like, I couldn't really care less about the map, to be honest. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what, yeah, it's, it's whatever, right? That's not going to move the needle for Arena. This has an asymmetrical attack and defense gameplay. This is basically adding search and destroy. They're adding the traditional counter-strike, like bomb plan and defusal style game mode. However, they're going to do it in their way. A lot of people have basically said, like, this is the only thing that could revive Arena, really, because mm -hmm. the way that Arena plays out right now, like with a symmetric attack and defend, you're not incentivized to go into the point because the point is too... Like, we talked about this before, right? But the point is too un indefensible. And so both teams right. just like if if you're playing if you're actually playing properly and you're playing to to win, yeah. most teams end up just like pushing the timer right down to mm -hmm. um the cleanup crew, and then it ends up becoming like a who's got the better spot from the cleanup crew, and like that mm -hmm. gameplay is just is it's just like it was a cool idea, right? Like it was a cool idea, and we saw what the ultimate uh player user like player behavior was that resulted out of that system, and it's like not very good. That's just the long and the short of it. And so mm -hmm. they're adding this symmetric one. Like the symmetric one is great because, sorry, asymmetric is great because it means that one team has to do something and one team can sit and defend, but one team has to do something or they lose. And like, that's much better because it, for, it forces the play. Right? It's, it's the reason why battle royales work, right? You can't just like sit there, do nothing in battle royale. Like the zone's going to come around you and, and then you will die. So you have to move, right? You just have to go. And it's like, yeah, it's like um, T's versus CT's on on uh, Counter-Strike, right? Like, terrorists have to go and try and plant. Um, yes, ETs can defend or whatever, but, like, it's, it's just much more interesting. So that's going to be coming to Arena, which is, which is going to be good, and, uh, and this new map. So who knows whether that's going to revive it or not. I mean, I, I personally think it's probably a bit late, but we'll see. Who knows? Like, they're going to have more people who have to go and play Arena now because they're going to have to get the, you know, the rewards to get all the stuff if they want to. Mm -hmm. So, don't know. And then we move on to the August 2024 patch. So that's the big one. That's the patch 0 0.15. That's the one with most of the content that we'll, we'll be talking about. Um, as it says, new content, but there's tons. We'll go through it in a sec. Quality life, technical improvements, new weapons, highlight expansion, audio optimization, and most interestingly, FPS optimization on all locations, which is, that was from like yonder back in a million years ago when that was remember that was like on one of the roadmaps and i was like where'd it go and the was like we're having problems <laughs> basically it was just like oh yeah streets is gonna work now it's like this is like two years ago and he was just like oh actually no it isn't and uh okay we've actually cancelled all the expansions and uh yeah it's it actually really sucks and it's it's really very hard to, to fix so that's supposedly coming which would be good um i will say we give Tarkov really hard rap for its FPS. Mm -hmm. But after playing some of the other games that are like coming out, you know, you play like, well, Grey Zone's probably like a bit unfair because it's like so early access and it's using like new tech as well. But like Grey Zone plays like really, really, really badly in comparison to EFT. Obviously it's a big open, it's like a different game, like big open map, like it's, it's totally different tech. It's on UE5. You, know, you, you need a beast system to even get to 50 FPS in that game without using frame gen. Um, and like, even like, you know, Arena Breakout like plays pretty well, but I wouldn't say that like the Arena Breakout maps have more FPS than like custom, for example. Mm -hmm. Like even on my old system, um, I didn't have any issues on, on like customs, woods, 
like any like the old map right like i never really had any problems there maybe like maybe i'm maybe i'm wrong on that maybe it's maybe they are like different but i feel like you know tarkov's worlds are more in depth more detailed to them than the abi map it's not necessarily an issue but you just probably expect lower fps but i feel like outside of streets and outside of like in, in order outside of streets definitely lighthouse depends and sometimes shoreline I think like all the other maps are actually pretty good. Like Shoreline, they did something weird too. Right? Like, we talked about this. You know, everybody's um, textures went to high, and like people were getting like crazy stutters. Um, you had the same thing, and, and I had to turn mine down as well. And then Lighthouse, like, is just typically really, really hard to to run. Interesting yeah. side story on that, by the way. Yeah. After updating to the forty seventy Ti Super, mm-hmm. Lighthouse is like fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like that that map got an humongous boost. Like I play like I play so I cap my my just across all games to like 120 because I literally can't tell after it gets to 120 FPS. Like my monitor <laughs> technically goes to like 165, but I'd rather not just you know burn the card up and like heat the stuff up. Like I, I after after about 890 FPS, I honestly can't really tell. Like I'd have to I'd have to really do like a side by side to like know. But like to me, the game feels like perfectly smooth after like 85 90 fps i just mm-hmm. i just don't notice after that so i was like i'll cap it to 120 just across every game lighthouse literally just like fits at the 120 cap wow like it's crazy and it goes down to i can't remember it's like 90 100 fps scoped in or whatever it's like it's insane like the game, like it's completely different the map is like totally different um with 16 gig of vram like it just makes yeah a huge difference like you know yeah it's quicker card as well that's fine but like that is right. so graphic card intent like um reliant that map yeah, because I think like, all the I'm guessing all the textures and LODs mm. being what they are. Yeah, exactly. Like, but it's not necessarily that much bigger than the other maps. Um, mm-hmm. Like, like streets is still not like, um, like ama- not amazing. Like, it's a bit better, but it didn't, didn't really make much difference, right? I'm probably still CPU bound with the X3D chip, the 5800. X3D. Yeah, probably still CPU bound on streets. Um, yeah, and like it helps a bit. It's like less less stuttery in some places, right. and it doesn't like it doesn't crash my OBS when I leave the raid anymore because like it mm-hmm. still fits you know medium textures it fits inside the vram limit so i don't I, i'm pretty sure that was the culprit that was that probably that and like the unoptimized plugin i was using um, as i said it got a massive update so it's probably a combination of those two things but yeah lighthouse is like crazy now but anyway streets is like really the main one so most people when they talk about like oh tarkov's like terrible optimization like terrible fps people are normally talking about streets these days these and days, i think yeah. and i just feel that like yeah if you've got like an older system tarkov doesn't necessarily run like amazingly but like what new game does you know you look at like cyberpunk and you look at like a whole bunch of other like single players that have come out they've like got i mean to be fair they've got really good graphics and ray tracing and stuff but like just most of the games these days just like run like ass on like most machines and they've and even even those ones that are you know all like looking beautiful they're like relying on you know dlss to the max they're relying on like frame gen and all this stuff right it's like i don't know maybe maybe we do give tarkov too much of a hard time or you could argue that the engine is super old and it should should be better based on the fact that it's like eight years old. I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. But I feel like, yeah, for most people, it's like playable. Point. Yeah, the only anyway. other map that kind of gives me troubles is Woods. Um, I guess... Oh, really? Yeah. I guess just like combination of CPU and GPU. Mm. Not being quite enough on my settings. I never but, yeah. had any issues with Woods, even with the 3070. But maybe it was the CPU, because yeah, I got the 3D, right? And... Yeah, the ones the just the fifty hundred, so maybe, but I didn't think Woods is that CPU intensive. Huh? Yeah, I don't know. It's just I'm a sure. little. It just like it, I guess, like it drops or like I wouldn't say stutters, but it just like sometimes goes. Is it like the one percent lows or whatever? Because like I do maybe. remember that was one of the things that the the X three D chips are like particularly good at. Yeah, it's like it's stopping those one percent lows being quite so low. The game yeah. doesn't feel as like jittery. Um. Like even it, like, I mean, the FPS is great on on it anyway. But I do remember that was another thing. It's just like the dips are like nowhere near as severe. Mm-hmm. So maybe yeah, that, that could be it. It's just sometimes it feels like it's not always hitting at least sixty on woods for me and my system, anyways. Kind of yeah, like how shoreline crazy. feels now, you know. Mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I yeah. ever had that before. Not after getting the new one. But, yeah. um, anyway, anyway, so. That's for August EFT. And yes. Then... August EFT, so that's the main patch, but there's a bunch of stuff that's coming. And then there's an arena patch, which is bringing the preset rework and preset customization. So, so I think I've... they said this before. 
You're gonna have like meta points, I think. You can like build a kit. Meta points. <laughs> that's such a so. Nikita. <laughs> uh, that's great. So that should be coming as well. Like it's it's kind of a shame that that's not happening with like. This is the this is the problem with BSG, right? They like do this stuff like out of turn. <laughs> Like, I feel like, eh. oh, I don't know, man, like, they're going to integrate, this is the, and they lose momentum doing this stuff, right? Like, they did, it was like Scav Karma before VoIP, right? It was just, like, weird. Like, oh, they're going to integrate Arena EFT, but it's going to be like it is now, so the game sucks and no one wants to play it. Okay, fine. Then they're going to add the new, like, asymmetry attack and defense mode, which is going to be really cool, but you're still going to be stuck with all the old presets, so it's going to just play like ass. And then, like, a month later, they're like, oh, now that we've reset this, yeah, we've redone the presets. Now you can actually play the game properly. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, but like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess the only thing you could do is like merge. Like, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm assuming just the play, you know, pretend I'm Nikita for a second. Mm -hmm. You know, if the game comes out and the feedback is this game mode sucks and they t try tweaking it. And it's still not working. It's like, okay, everybody's suggesting this thing. Clearly, people want this. Let's start working on this. And then two months down the road, people are now complaining about, you know, presets and kits and stuff. So they try tweaking it. And then they're still like, you know, the feedback is still not very positive. So they're like, okay, we need to like redesign presets. So it's like, but I already have people working on this first task that's not finished, you know. So I guess, I guess maybe that's the logic followed by, you know, it at the end of the day, they are business. So they want to like, put stuff, you know, content out for game to be purchased and sellable. So, like I said, I feel like the only thing they could do is, like, merge, like, basically delay the new map and special gameplay update to August until it's all in one, but, you know, I don't know if that's, like, I don't know. That that's the only thing I could think of. So, like, yeah, I kind of agree with you. Better. Not that. Yeah, like, I, I agree with you, but I don't, I don't really know. I don't have the full details to say, but, yeah, I do. I, I see your point. I see you. Yeah, I almost feel it's just like, you know, you kind of want to fix the systems and then go like, now we're bringing in the game mode, like, you know, search and destroy. Right. And you've got integration and you've got system rework for presets, or whatever. So like everything's working. I just feel like it's very momentum sapping to be like, we've released it, but that, and people are going like, I, yeah, okay, but I, I don't want to play it with the other stuff still in there. And then it's like, well, when the presets customization comes out, it's just like, oh, we're kind of like, Mm -hmm. or, you know, it's old news now. I don't know. It's, it's, it just maybe. seems strange. Maybe there's maybe they don't really have much choice either because it's like they don't want to delay the integration any longer. Um, but yeah, if it was me, I would have done the asymmetrical attack defense last probably, and done this customization earlier, or maybe mm -hmm. integrated it like right yeah. at the end, like done it the other way around. But like again, with timing, it's like that pushes it another two months. But like, does it even matter at this point? I feel like maybe it doesn't even matter. I don't like yeah, system rework like. A search and destroy and then integrate it with arena and be like right now you have all this cool stuff to go and do go and play search and destroy and you can make your own kits mm -hmm. like and because then it's almost like no like nobody's playing arena now really so do the do the groundwork stuff and then suddenly get everybody in like you almost get like three patches worth of like people's in, interest in one go because when they come back they go oh cool there's this new mode and like oh cool there's like you know the new preset system as well and there's all this stuff to do to bring this stuff back to EFT it's like this is the thing, like people, and I don't want to like beat on this point too much, but it's True. like they're going to integrate everything, add Arena Ref, and add all these in-game quests. And it's like where now, if you want to unlock the stuff, you're going to have to play the existing like bad version of Arena right. to Suffer do it. Suffer playing the bad version. Yeah, like I it see, sucks, man. Like put that in. Like just, I wouldn't care if they moved the integration to August. Is, is anybody like desperate for this? Like, mm -hmm. No, not really. Right? Like I know people really want to see it, but I just don't. I think it's the wrong order. I just really don't think this is good. In yeah. this particular way, I'd like I w I'd want I want it all to be bundled together. Like, do I, I want to go back and play all that stuff? Like now, play arena. Like, it depends on how you can do. It. If you can just play last hero mode, then that. <laughs> but it's like the daily quest or whatever where you're going to earn these things is probably going to be, you know, win three rounds of X, and mm -hmm. that means you're going to yeah. have to play six <laughs> games. Then you're going to, you know, it's going to end up taking you eight because you have a forty percent win rate, and it's going to be, yeah, you know, it's going to take you three hours to just do one daily quest, and because that's not the, like it's just it's just painful, man. Like, I, I I don't. Know. Yeah, it's not, it's not up too much about it. <laughs> eliminate 50 arena contestants with the ST9M <laughs> in your kit. Yeah, that kind of stuff. So that's the roadmap that goes to 
August. Um, it's almost a shame it doesn't go any further than that, but you know, but who knows? Maybe they're going to release the game at the end of the. You never, you never know. Uh, uh, aren't, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the other thing they, that he touched on is TwitchCon is happening mm. in August. No, is it August? TwitchCon is. Uh, so there was a couple of events. There's the the PC gaming show on June the 9th. That's first, mm-hmm. and then TwitchCon Europe in uh where is that one happening forget and then i think they're going to san diego as well okay I I yeah i think they're I, like spot like my headline sponsor for it now or something like that. that yeah that was the big thing that i saw like they're doing it they're sponsoring it again mm. which you know last time they did this arena was the big headline right i mean they had the booth they had the uh, yeah. streamers there and everything so the the following speculation i mean this is absolutely pure speculation but it could mean that they're going to be releasing 1.0 i think that's highly unlikely but it could have you know it's not a z- non-zero chance right mm-hmm. uh here we go so this is the um it's post from logical basket games are returning or no this is actually just from bsg that's- tweeted Oh yeah. Um, what was that oh, June is... the twenty ninth and thirtieth? That's Rotterdam. That's Europe. Yeah, but this is for Arena. Okay, so as, okay, so maybe it's just an Arena promote promotion thing. I thought maybe I don't know. The any, point being is that they're kind of showing up in different places, so maybe we'll get more information related maybe. to Tarkov one point I don't think it's out of the question that it would release at the end of the year in December because he said we're adding this stuff, but he said like, you know, most of the team is working on storyline quests and like quality of life and like the release. End game stuff, he also mentioned. So I guess like people were asking me in chat about that and I was like, I think that means like how you escape from Tarkov because I think there's like multiple routes. So he said anyway, and things like the prestige system that he talked about last time and not so much this time. Um, somebody in chat was asking about uh, where the visual overhaul was on the roadmap, and it's it's not there. Like he's talked a lot about the visual roadmap. He said it was probably coming before 1.0. That's the only thing that makes me think like, oh, maybe it's. Well, I mean, it could come like mid. It'd be weird to come mid wipe. I think I I think in in all likelihood, if release is like around the corner that December would be a regular wipe with like maybe the graphics overhaul and stuff. And then they'd like release it in the summer maybe of like 2025. That'd be like probably my like base guess because they do want to release it soon. But I mean, yeah. it could be, it could be this winter. It could be next summer. It could be the, the winter after. Like it's, it's, it's impossible to know. <laughs> um, as he says, oh yeah, you know, I can't, did he say it to, I can't remember. It was, can't remember who he said it to. It might even have been me in Hanover, where <laughs> where he was just like, you know, the game just like keeps creeping. He's trying, you know, been trying to release it for years, and it's like it's just feature creep, just keeps going and going. But mm-hmm. anyway, I don't know. So with all of that, let's go through some of the other features. We can skip over stuff that we already talked about. Given that we were talking about Arena like relatively recently, we'll just like we'll talk about the the Theta container, Theta container. Yay. <laughs> Um, this is a new container. He did actually tease this before on Twitter, but it was just a picture of the case. So nobody knew how big it was. Yeah. And it is a 10 slot, like two by two, and then <laughs> three two by one. Mm-hmm. So it's one lot bigger than the gamma, but is a, a worse uh, orientation. Yeah. I mean, how because you can't put anything three by one in it, so you yeah. so it can't fit. It can't fit like a cat statue. You can't put like xenomorphs and that kind of thing in it. The most important thing, probably, that you can't fit in there is a Surf Twelve. Yeah, so I mean, if you like Surf Twelve, then you can't have that in your in your bomb anymore. But like, I use CMS. Like, I I would definitely use this rather yeah. than the Gamma personally. Like, there's not that much stuff that I care about. Like, I was thinking about the high value items too, and somebody right. was talking about the lion, and I'm just like, well, the lions. Like first slot, yeah. like six slot. It's not even worth that much, actually. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't put them in my gamma anyway. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter to me. Like all the items that you want are all two by ones or one by ones normally. 
I guess so like, I don't think it makes much difference. One upside to look at is if you don't have EOD and you know you're like a standard account player and you have arena, this is and depending on how easy this container is to get, this might be like a just a viable option instead of like doing the typical path to get uh what is it, Epsilon? Epsilon, yeah. Or even like buying a beta container from Peacekeeper. I know some people mm. do that, which like you know, maybe that's worth or maybe maybe that's just like i think that's the thing though it used to suck because it used to be harder to get than epsilon but like they did actually rebound because i I haven't ever looked at it right for a long time and people were telling me like no no it's actually like a sense stepping stone these days nice which is good yeah but yeah like you could in theory go and get this thing whatever you you know whatever you got to do apparently it's some like arena arena quest line from Mm. ref whatever that means i don't even know what arena quest line like what what does that even mean (laughs) Plant the okay. marker in the middle of a match that your team's relying on. It's like, bro, I can't I defuse the bomb. I gotta do this quest for a ref. I gotta get my theta. <laughs> yeah, is it just gonna be like a bunch of daily quests in a row? I don't know. Like it's <laughs> I don't know what it means. Like arena quest line. Yeah. Uh, that just sounds weird to me. I like I don't mind daily quest arena, that's fine. But like to have an actual like story based quest line in arena, it's just like uh, it's just gonna yeah. forgive my cynicism, but it's just gonna be more <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, I think it's kill just things. More bullshit. Yeah, use you know more placeholders. Use different but, guns, like yeah. Uh, but, um, so yeah, I mean, cool, I though. personally would use this if it was like relatively like easy to obtain. Like, I don't feel like the two, as you said, there's just not a lot of three by ones, except for like the few exceptions, and even then, like a cat's like only 10k per slot. Like, I don't even put a cat in there. Like, I, there's no. it's like. But probably by the time you get this, it's like just gonna be better for putting high value items in. Like you, you could actually carry like Doc Sick in here. I think actually, yeah. yeah, that'd actually be really good for that because the um gamma's a little. You have to like cut one item, um, whether it's like ammo or something, if you want to bring in two, uh, like a CMS mm-hmm. plus Doc and Sick. It leaves you what uh, three. three spaces. Yeah. So you would have, then you get your stem case, and mm-hmm. then you got two slots. I guess I guess that's pretty then manageable. You can, carry a, you can carry a splint, and then yeah, okay, that's that's the one thing that's kind and of. And then annoying. do two ammo <laughs> stacks if you want, but you've got to choose between like two ammo stacks, like splint. Like, do you have like a long term painkiller, like ibuprofen in there or whatever? Like, that's those are the, the things that you're kind yes. of like yes. tying between. Yes. Like, I've typically not been carrying those, but I went back yeah. to carrying them again. It's like, I, I swap and change depending on how I feel about it. But, like, yeah, having that one extra slot is kind of cool, as you say. It's it, kind of nice. You to add, like, an extra line in here. Or you can go, oh, I actually can just, like, add this extra this extra thing. Like, if I'm carrying my usual... I, normally where I get squeezed, because normally it's fine for me. Normally I would just go CMS, Blint, Doc's case or Sick case. I don't usually only take one. Right. I usually take Sick case for Dog Tags. Right. And then... Like a long term painkiller of some kind. Yeah. Then my stim case and then two stacks of ammo. That's my usual. I normally yeah. get squeezed though when I go um to wherever that needs a red rebel. And I'm like, ah, oh, and then I've got to fit yes. power cord. Power cord's yes. quite expensive. Like I think yeah. at the minute it's like eighty K or something. So it's like, oh geez. So I've often just been moving my CMS up into the top. But I'm like, oh, I could I could like realistically get rid of the splint, say, and like keep the power cord. Like in this thing, you go like CMS, power cord, sick case, and you've got two stacks of ammo, long term painkiller and um, your stim case, it's like that's okay, and then the, you you just deal with the splint in your rig or whatever. Yeah, uh, that that'd be okay. So having that one extra space is actually kind of cool. Yeah, it's kind of like, like a quality of life thing because I hate it whenever you like forget to bring a splint because you're so used to like because last fight in your case. Yeah, last fight I was doing the two dock case and six case, which like felt really good for money making purposes and whatnot. Like on certain maps too, like streets especially because just all the mm. safes and all the stuff that can go in the docks. And you just put a lot of keys in the sick because it can just hold a lot more. But um, yeah, it's just kind of like a quality, <laughs> almost like a quality of life thing. That like, even if I'm only keeping a nine k item in there for a split, I just one mm-hmm. of those things that I don't, you know, have to for like rem- remember and forget and whatnot. It's annoying. I know what you mean. It's like I don't really care about the money, but if I yeah, if you put it in there, it almost like because it saves your loadout. Right, like even if you right. die, like you don't have to put everything back in, so you will never forget. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if you did take it out for something, like the other item is in the plate in, in where it is. So if you survive, you're just yeah, like, oh, yeah, my yeah. splints up here. So when I empty out my thing, I'm like, oh, there's a hole. 
Yep. And now I'll just yep. refit it back. So you never forget. But then, yeah, if you like, if it's full and you bring splints <laughs> with you, it's just like, you're gonna forget to bring one. And yeah. then you're just like, you know, painkiller up to the extract, <laughs> like with a broken leg. It happens every, like every time I don't have it in my case, I always forget to classic. take it with me at some point. This is a classic. The one thing too that I have to mention yep. that way everyone else can not be able to unsee it. And maybe I'm just crazy, but I swear looking at this, the slots, the middle two by one is thicker than the other two by ones. And maybe it's just an optical illusion, but I just cannot unsee it. And so now I have to make everyone else suffer if they also see it at that way I do. I can't I can't even tell. Like I genuinely it's, can't tell. It's probably an optical illusion on my end. I actually I I think that's absolutely what it is, because now that I'm looking at it closely, at least on my screen, the lines on the sides of the rectangle uh of the one in the middle are lighter than the rest that are or sorry, are just darker, more uh opaque than the ones on the sides yeah so it gives you impression maybe <laughs> i got nachos in chat he says no no i see it <laughs> so anyways enjoy that i put them over the you know what though like if, if that that's actually insane i think like i actually think it is <laughs> i think it's actually just a shading thing i don't think it's actually i i bigger. think it's maybe shading but like the way that it's shaded it's mm -hmm. like it's literally like a single <laughs> pixel yeah. wider in the one that I've done. I think you're right, dude. That's like that's nuts. That's nuts. Nuts attention to detail to notice that I didn't spot that. It's just maybe in a little. It's like one a maybe two. Weirdo. <laughs> yeah, depending yeah. on like where you put, like depending on exactly how you line it up. Like that's that's crazy. Yeah, maybe it's two actually. Maybe it's one on each side. That's actually nuts. <laughs> mm. Well, there you go. There you go. So. Let's move on because we're going to run out of time otherwise. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to go down the list because I can't remember when he said what, but these things are the important stuff that we haven't covered so far. Next one being talking about loadouts, mannequins. This actually works quite well for what we were talking about before, which is a pure fluke. It's at the top of my list and it just happens to neatly feed into what we were talking about. Forgetting to create, you know, to put stuff into your loadout is a pain. Making new loadouts is a pain. They're going to add mannequins to the game. So you're going to be able to basically set up like multiple kit presets in the hideout and you can just click into one you it uses the preset system so i think you'll set it up using the hideout module i guess maybe i'm not even sure i don't you probably won't even have to do that you can probably go and look at them in the hideout but the way that it looks like you interact with that system is through the preset system so they're, they're listed like mannequin um like one through five or whatever and mm -hmm. you can click on that preset and you can press exchange so if you have you know say you went to a sniping kit to woods you're like well i want to play factory you've got like an mp7 factory loadout you on your mannequin you can click on the mannequin just press exchange swap your kit onto the, the mannequin and the mannequin's kit onto you. It's like so good. That's actually really, really, really cool. So you can settle these things up and then just like when you're playing, especially for, you know, it's, it's going to be good for everybody, but especially for like content creators as well, like streamers. That's like so, so good. Thinking for myself on stream, it's like having to rebuild a kit to go to different maps, just like really annoying. Um, I like to try and prep stuff beforehand, but like I'll be able to prep like five kits or something before and then just like swap and change between them. Like there's basically no downtime between raids. It's so good. Especially if you can do it like rig with with ammo and meds and blah blah make sure everything's all set up properly and again it stop me from forgetting to do this stuff before yeah. which is kind of neat pretty nice quality of life and just like feature aesthetic wise like this looks really good <laughs> in the uh mm -hmm. hideout like the way they got it laid out like it's very immersive yeah. i guess is the word I'm looking for. yeah because they kind of got like the good. gun case behind like the mm -hmm. gun rack behind with the weapon on it like the three weapon you know the, the primary secondary and then the melee or whatever and it's mm -hmm. like it just looks so cool. So that's like, that's really, really good. Really looking forward to that. Um, they are, again, this is, this is kind of going to be no, like no particular order. <clears throat> um, he just like casually offhand, like I basically like lost my stuff on stream because like he casually offhand was just like, oh yeah, you're going to be able to pick which grenade by just like holding G. <laughs> and then the next thing, and I was like, hold up, mate. Like you can't just move on from that. Like people have been asking you forever. Like, this is Jesse life changing. Asked, <laughs> Jesse asked V to ask you that like a year ago and you said no. Like what? Like this is crazy. But I mean, this is, this is good, right? Like that it feels like Nikita's mentality has changed. And this is the thing that I said to chat yesterday as well, which people were going like, Oh, you know, they're finally listening after Unheard. And I was like, don't let the Unheard thing... I, the Unheard thing's super annoying, right? And like, we've talked a billion times too much about Unheard. That was really annoying. But from the beginning of patch 14, they have been listening and do, been doing the right things. Unheard is like a really unfortunate, humongous 
black spot in the middle of the whole good work that they've been doing because mm-hmm. the rest of batch 14 has been fantastic right like all the quality of life stuff the, the moving of the ammo like the, just, just the way that things have gone the changes they've made a lot of that stuff has been really really good so they, they have been listening and it's just a it's a continuation of that if we can just manage to get over the unheard thing and um yeah nikita can pull like no more bs then we you know, will be able to take these kind of things where they are open to these ideas and it's like we said before grenades were really op because you could just click click and just carpet bomb dorms or wherever it was and it was funny but like it just was so especially if you're in a squad right it was like completely insane there was like no counterplay to it yeah then they went and put two things in place to prevent grenades being op rather than just one they're like oh we we hate grenades so we're gonna put two systems in one is the two-part pin pull and throw so it's like 10 times slower and also randomized grenades come out of your rig unless you have them specifically numbered and it was like one of those would have been fine um, well, the two the two part pimple was definitely necessary. The the randomized grenades thing is like not useful, and all that does is force people to run one grenade only, so that when you press G, it always pulls out the grenade that you think because you're only running F ones or you're only running, you know, M whatevers. So this is great. I, it sounds like maybe like the heal radio menu, or um, well, it's not radio, but the, the heal drop down menu. So you know, maybe hold G and then you can just scroll to find the grenade you like. This is great. So yeah. I never thought this would come, and he just mentioned it offhand, like, oh, yes, we're adding this. It's like, well, what about your vision? Um, <laughs> but anyway, no, I'm, I'm glad he's, like, gone back on that. Then, um, so this is a patch. Oh, was this, is this a patch 15 thing? Bipods and mantling? I think so. He said it's coming. Like, he showed yes. a little trailer for it. I think it was on the roadmap. Yeah. Or no, no, it wasn't, actually. No, it wasn't. Yeah, so, like, but there was a was... whole bunch of stuff he reeled off with patch 15. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see if I've got. Let me see if I've got it here. Yeah, mantle. Yeah, okay. So yeah, it was part of his like patch fifteen thing. I was just going back through my chronological list. Okay, it is part of patch fifteen apparently. Um, so he showed like an early work in progress. I mean, it looks fine. You get reduced recoil for mantling or going prone and with bipods and whatever. So like that's cool. That this was on an old roadmap, so it's good that they're adding this. So we expected this. Yes. Like, yeah. Six months ago or whatever it was but it never came like it doesn't matter it's fine but we knew that it was like in their i mean in their plan personally i really look looking forward to this like this would, this is something that i really like i like bipod like i like the idea of using bipods to get like mm-hmm. a you know you trade mobility for like enhanced recoil or something um so yeah i mean it it looks a little it, it comes it's 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 one of those things that's like probably really hard to actually like from a game design standpoint, to like balance to where it's like, because mm. um, you know you're tr- you're giving up a pretty big aspect, right? Mobility, like presumably, yeah. like you're locked in. Maybe I mean again, maybe you're not locked in. Maybe because it it looks like here in the footage, like he walks up to the barricade, he uh, the character flips open the bipod, and then he just like sort of moves forward and ads. Like if it's contextual, that could be really good. But also could be a little janky, but maybe because you could like turn the bipod on and off, then that's fine. Because in the contextual aspect, like it won't just automatically snap when you have it on or off. Like that could be pretty cool. Um, so yeah, it's definitely gonna be in the, in the details of how it functions. Then then you can also like brace to the wall, which is like also like a cool. Like I like I like this kind of like it's adding for me. It's adding to the immersion factor. Yeah, and then also doing like a gameplay mechanic as well. Where it's like it feels, I don't know. It's like very immersive, and I and I like if it's like good enough, then my, and it's just another tool in, toolkit in your arsenal, you know, like another tactic yeah. to use, and, and it's like fits more thematically than like flashlight bunny hop across the doorway, you know, free look. <laughs> <laughs> so mm-hmm. I, I I like I like this firstly. I, I hope it's like relatively good, you know, and usable. Yeah, I, I, it feels like one of those things that's either going to be just like stupid OP broken and is used all the time, or it's just like never used. It's probably going to lean more on the never used part, but, so. you know, it could be, it could be useful. It's, it's hard to say for certain. It, it really comes down to the details, you know. Mm. Um, it's probably also going to be buggy. There will probably be exploits and clipping with it, <laughs> just like mentally. But that's to Get be Get into Mark Room with this one cool bipod <laughs> trick. <laughs> <laughs> up you go you know how it do become... you onto the uh you know the the the, the, the antlers in the room or whatever uh, 
the, the, the new meta, you just bipod mantle clip inside of walls and now you can shoot people through walls. It's actually really good, you guys. Don't sleep yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah, my speculation about this was that now that they've gone and marked all of the surfaces for like vaulting interaction, oh. that probably lets them do this because That's a good they've got thought. some they've got some map framework for like edge mm-hmm. detection, vault detect, like so, some system in place for that. Sure, like it could sure. be, you know, it might be as an automated thing that they've just like gone through the maps and then they've like had to fix stuff manually afterwards. But like I wouldn't be surprised if that some similar system works for it because it's like you know the the slow, the the vault over a wall obviously not the not necessarily the climb one but like the vault over a wall is like it has to be the height at which like you right. can kind of rest a gun on it maybe so that maybe they do maybe they're sort of related in some way yeah I could see this. that so yeah I don't know. that was my speculation that like, maybe that's related but yeah but we'll see I'm like I'm actually I'm actually not like not crazy about the mechanic I don't I, I just don't really care like, I'm mm-hmm. I'm kind of whatever about it I don't mind um, we'll see uh, maybe it'll be great. But um, I'm not sure, especially like wall corner. Like, I tried doing like corner stuff in Call of Duty, and it's like wall. It's like so weird. I just find it so like so odd. It's yeah. To use properly. I mean, I just for bipods than I do like the wall mantle. The wall mantle is like really odd. The, the, yeah, the wall. The, I think it takes a bit of a learning curve because you kind of gotta like anticipate where the camera's gonna snap to once you mm. execute the command. So you almost have to like you have to like line it up where you'll be able to snap onto it and then also quickly turn the camera enough to where you can see down the hallway you know yeah. so there's a little bit of a I, I know what you mean it doesn't always feel the greatest experience and yeah but it, it, and yeah gone i was gonna say but you know i mean it, it could be it could be one of those interesting things where you could maybe use it to like more as an information gathering tool where you like just quickly mantle Maybe. on the wall instead of like a peak, mm. you know, a and little bit more like... precise, or whatever. Yeah, maybe because like doing the peak is sometimes quite cover. hard. Yeah, because I was going to say something related, which was that I think what's going to end up mattering a lot for this is, and you know, this is going to get tested to hell as well. Mm-hmm. But it's just like the lean peak around the corner with the barrel just exposed. Like, mm-hmm. how much is your body going to be exposed versus the wall mantle? Right, you're going to yeah. do side by yeah. side. Like, how much that affect it will depend on whether people use it for information or they do actually use it for gunfighting if it ends up being a really tight angle which i think it probably won't be you're probably still better off just using the actual peak around the wall to just expose you know your right elbow and part of your shoulder and just the barrel of your gun like a wall mantle is probably gonna you know you're like i think your left hand is like kind of around the wall like if you look in yeah if you look in the clip your left hand is like touching the wall so mm-hmm. it probably exposes more of your center line and to the right than yeah and, just and doing the peak but i don't know as you turn your gun, you're sort of like on a swivel, so your body's swiveling around mm. the corners. Well, so it could be <laughs> maybe there's a a mechanic where you just like swing your mouse violently, and you just see the character model like peeking really <laughs> fast, like Ferrari peak, <laughs> the, Fer- the new Ferrari peak. <laughs> but uh, <sighs> oh, what was it? Gonna say? Oh, that was the other thing that you reminded me of. It's like. Talking about you know corners and peaking is like I wonder if you'll be able to do this left hand. You'll be able to like True. swap shoulders and then also maybe it's only limited. I, like I, I think that would be I don't know I don't know if that, that would, would be useful. Be... That would actually be useful because you have this whole like um, barrel stuffing situation with the left peak oh, where it yeah, moves yeah. back to the right. Yeah. So if they don't fix that, then it would be useful to like be able to go into a like it's a specific mode right to go into a left hand mantle it's like oh the gun will always stay on the left it doesn't just go you know we have this like weird latch situation where it's like your left peak okay barrel stuff barrel stuff barrel stuff oh i'm around the corner i turn slightly oh i'm barrel stuff now but now i'm barrel stuff back on the right and so now i have to move another like 15 centimeters to get it to go back to the left and then move back in 14 to get the perfect peak again like that that like weird latching behavior is like really annoying Mm-hmm. So maybe you know a left mantle would avoid that which would actually be cool that genuinely would be quite cool to stop you having to fiddle around with that obviously the perfect solution to that is just to have a left hand barrel stuff but mm-hmm. we talked about that previously um next thing yeah okay so we talked about local pc pv modes that's fine and we talked about unity 2022 he talked a little bit about map to map travel just a little bit more, and said mm-hmm. that map to map travel, like it, it's, I'm still not 100% certain about what this is going to be like, but he said something along the lines of map to map travel is going to be like via like 
a quest or an event or something. There's going to be like um, going to be like a quest line or whatever to do map to map travel, and then after the quest is completed, then that mechanic will be then like available in the in the main game as well. So exactly how that works, what that means, like I really don't know. Like you'll be able to what carry on doing map to map travel, but for like what purpose? I don't really know. It all it almost sounded like the old system was going to stay in parallel with the map to map travel system. Which I kind of like if they can make it work. Because the thing I don't like about map to map travel, which is what I said in my video about it, is say you're up at like interchange and I'm down on reserve. I would like do I do me and my friends have to like I you know, I don't play with other people, but it's yeah, for people who are in that situation, sure. am I gonna have to play like two, three raids to get to my buddies? Like that doesn't sound very good for gameplay, even if it's immersive. Like it's just just kind of annoying. So if they can have some way that it's like, you know, open Tarkov free play is just like the normal game mode. And then there's like a special map to map travel mode, which, you know, you'll get like, nobody can really tell who's fighting against you, but you get some extra bonuses or whatever. It's like a little bit like doing the guide, I guess, you know, like maybe there's like some, something for doing that or whatever, or like you're know, moving to a different map or I'm, I've no idea. I'm not really sure. Like that's why I'm a bit like, I'm not, I don't know about it because I can't think of a way to make that like work really well and also be kind of fitting with the game and with you know, the, the, the feel and all that. Stuff. So it's interesting to hear him talk about it in that way because it does sound like they're both... Because if it's via a quest or event, then presumably you don't have to use map to map travel before doing that. Mm -hmm. But then saying, oh, you do the... Because I can imagine it being a quest or whatever because like, we have that already with, with the guide, really. Mm -hmm. um, but then like, oh, after the event being like, oh, and then that mechanic's going to stay available, it's like... What does that mean exactly? Like, why, why would people do that? Maybe it will just be like, oh, you can go from one map to the other, like in your existing form. Like, I, I, I don't know. This is the thing. It asks more questions. This is probably one of the things I'm like least sure about, even after you know, him, him speaking about it a bit more. I still am not sure. Yeah, I, I wish I had more to add, but it's, just, mm. it's really going to be down to how they implement it. There's so many question marks there for me that yeah. it's almost impossible to really speculate anything. You can just do it in so many different ways. Yeah. How do, why did I write this? Yeah. Uh, Cause like it, it's, I would, I almost just feel like you don't want to make it to where like, yeah, I feel I almost feel like the system works fine as it is. And it's almost like it's already annoying ish to play with friends. Like not that, <laughs> You know yeah. what I mean? Like when you die and you just have to sit there, like you die off the spawn. It's like, no, you don't want to be the one person in your squad that died off the spawns. And now you have to sit there, do a scav run. You maybe, you know, it's like, I don't know. It, 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 you make some dinner, like get yeah, a drink. Right. It, it, like worst case, it's like in the wipe or like you don't even, it's so late in the wipe, like you don't even want to scav run because you got so much money. So you're just like, yeah. So make adding another like, barrier almost or like making you oh, oh we can't play guys i'm stuck on customs like you know mm. you gotta wait for me to move to the map you're on then we can group up like there's just so many yeah so definitely devil in the details for that one for me yeah i hope they can make it work like that would be better i think if they can mm -hmm. and have both in tandem like it'd be cool but, yeah because it, yeah. it's it's kind of it sounds cool to do map to map travel like it could be cool it could be but i don't want to do it all the time I think that's the thing. It sounds yeah. sick, but I don't want to do it all the time. Sometimes you just want to run a raid on a, on a map, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't always want to be like fully hardcore immersed. It'd be like, you know, oh, we're going to change the game to like hardcore mode. It's just like, I don't want to always play hardcore. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to always be kicking myself in the balls. Like, sometimes <laughs> I want to kick in the balls. But sometimes I just want you to, you know. Heard it here first. <laughs> hit them with a stick, like normal. Yeah. <laughs> like normal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. <laughs> okay, so Armistice, we talked about that already. Oh yeah, he just dropped this one liner in as well. They are going to disable the hearing distance buff from Perception. So Perception is basically not going to be a skill anymore. Big win. We've talked about this at length previously about how, as far as I'm concerned, it's a similar system to a new player can only see 200 meters and an experienced player can see 300 meters. <laughs> yeah. It's just a stupid, it's a stupid advantage that's like, doesn't even feel fair. Like, there's no counter to being able to hear further. It's just, it's just dumb, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, you just, you can't, you can't outplay that. It's just stupid. So apparently they are getting rid of that. I think that's really, really good. Faster hideout skill leveling. I think that's like an, an airwing specific request. He actually had like a couple of requests, and um, 
like a hideout skill leveling they, they made it like really really slow the tribe like he was i think he was saying that he wasn't even going to get max crafting and hideout like very few people do like to be honest like i don't like i craft while i'm playing and stuff but it's not like i'm opening up the game continuously all week right, crafting right. whatever i think this wipe my crafting and hideout managed with like 20 or, or something there he normally gets it towards the end of the wipe and this time he's like i'm not so it's like if he's not getting it no one's getting it right? i don't think anybody has like max crafting or whatever like may- maybe somebody does but uh yeah it's just like not enough people have it so faster faster hideout skill leveling which is cool um, and then a big one, apparently Finding Raid experiment was successful and they are not going to be adding Finding Raid back to the flea market as a requirement. It's going to stay like it is now. He didn't mention anything about anything else, which is, in my opinion, required, like stopping people from flipping on the traders. Um, you know, I have my little flag idea that we've talked mm-hmm. about a couple <laughs> of times um, where it just, you know, it just prevents people from buying items of the traders and reselling them because. I just think it's really bad for the early game. But he didn't talk about that. Yeah. But to be honest, like it's still, I think the game just feels so much better with this gone. Mm-hmm. We just need to, yeah, we just need to work on the early game. Like I'm, I'm hoping that they put a system in like that. Um, we'll see. Maybe, maybe I'll like, maybe I'll like ask them directly. I can like, I can speak to like, speak to PSG directly a little bit. Yeah. See, see them put some feelers out and be like, you got really, what's going on here? Like, are you thinking about this? You did it. Yeah. You did. You did see it, right? You did see it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, know what you mean. I can tell you're very yeah. like, uh, yeah, guys. This is the thing that's like a big yeah. deal, and I'm like, tell you know, I made a video. Did you see it? Like, it yeah. Was, well, it's yeah. funny because like on Twitter, lots are of other? people. Mm-hmm. That's what's gonna ask. Yeah, are other people yeah. like also? Well, I know. So we talked before a little bit about like Veritas is one, which is like an all-encompassing flag system. Right. 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 Which is like, it's like what I want to do, but kind of for everything to make everything easier like it's it sounds great mm-hmm. to be honest it sounds great but whether they'll do that i don't know this is like very easy to do it's just like one one thing of the the full you know platform that he would like to do and somebody said to me that maybe like maybe i missed it on podcast i can't remember but like maybe it, i think it was jesse was talking about it so i think like maybe he's got a similar concept in mind about it um and then a couple mm-hmm. of other people like came up with the idea by accident in my YouTube comments on one of my videos because someone was just like oh yeah you know pretend you haven't watched the other video and he was like no I genuinely didn't I was like well I think it's a good idea and then a load of people <clears throat> on some of the like feedback threads that Nikita has had a lot of people have either mentioned it on its own or mentioned it and said like you know m- you know my video my idea on it like do that like lots of lots of people have just like you know I've, I haven't prompted anyone to say it lots but lots of people have been talking about it which is good yeah, and I think there's a bunch of people that agree with me, and like I, I'm probably not the only person that's had this idea, but you know, I I sort of semi formalized it a year ago in that video that I did, and like I actually went through and thought out all the steps. Okay, well, what happens when you die in insurance and of your party, and like and blah, 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 like there doesn't seem to be any real glaring loopholes other than sniping into each other's match, trading kits when you're not on a party and extracting, but with the it's flea restrictions. Hoops. With the flea restrictions, you can't even do that with half the stuff that's actually useful anyway, right? So, like, mm. you couldn't do that with, like, PS12B or M855. Mm. Not even 56A1, right? You can't even buy that because that's restricted on the flea. So the only things you can do it with is, like, CBJ, FMJ ammo, like, things like that. They've, those have all got personal limits. So that makes it harder as well to do because you've got to actually, you know, sit there through multiple resets and buy quite a lot yourself. It's not like... This is actually something that surprised me, by the way. I didn't realize this until I went the other day to look for a... I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to try and buy a backpack for a preset because I was getting fed up of having to remake my kit every time and I wanted to buy a backpack with an unlimited trader supply because I was like I want to just be, it always to be purchasable right. doesn't exist anymore really there is no backpack that you can buy an infinite quantity because even... they got rid of global limits so every single bag I don't know if this is the same for every everything but I suspect oh. it is I didn't check I think everything has a personal limit now because there is no global limit the global limit is completely gone so Every item has a personal limit from the traders. As far as I think, maybe there are some others that are like unlimited. Maybe some of the basic mods or whatever. But every backpack at least has a trade mm. limit. So I picked one with eight. <laughs> and I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm having a bad day if I've gone through eight yeah, kits yeah. in one trader reset. But you know, um, that was interesting. You know, so so the personal limits thing is like in full force, which again makes it harder. The the um, <laughs> flea restrictions make it harder and the fact that you have to snipe into each other's match and extract 
to remove this like trader flag whatever yeah. i think it's the, the best solution so i really hope they do that um you know i'm i, I have not spoken to anybody but i haven't like tried to speak to them at all mm. about this previously um actually well not not for a year or whatever i did actually like flag it like a year ago um but it was kind of like so that was it was just not in the right frame of mind for it at that point i don't mm. think bsg team and nikita's decision making is like a complete night and day change <laughs> yeah. now yeah versus them. No, yeah, absolutely because um, it's like it'd be like absolutely not we're never doing that and then like mm. two years down the road rain on tarkov tv by the way we're adding grenade uh bindable hotkeys and swap yeah exa- exactly exactly stuff yeah like all and these things that the says, like point. not ever <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so it's interesting um, but that's staying anyway. So the only yeah, the only two things that really worry me about it is like trader flipping and hatchlings. We'll see about hatchlings. I don't think they're gonna yeah. do anything about hatchlings. We're just gonna we're just gonna have to see. Some mm-hmm. people say it's not a problem, some people say it will be a problem. Maybe just a couple of people will do it. I think we just gotta see. Like I think it's yeah. gonna be an issue personally, but also I don't really care. Like it's fine. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. not that bothered. Like hatchlings are not the worst thing in the world. Um unless it's literally like you and eight eight hatchlings, but <laughs> I don't yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. It's really hard to say with that because yeah. Yeah, it's it's really going to come down to the economy, really. Mm. Like if if the everything shoots up, which I think it should, because now people can buy slicks day one, presumably, if you find them in raid. Actually, can you even do that anymore? Which ones? Slicks. Like I'm trying to think oh, of like slick. a like a really oh yeah, but you can just sell player gear. Yeah, you can sell player gear. Yeah. So I I don't I guess like let's maybe you like couldn't a, sell you couldn't sell the slick plates on the flea anyway because they're class six. That's right. That's right. This is the restriction system. This is the restriction system I, fixes yeah. a lot of this, right? Yeah. Like it, yeah. A lot of these things are kind of okay. It's like it's literally yeah. just like some trader flip stuff and and like maybe hatchet runners, but yeah. Yeah, because I, I see know. what you're saying. So like the but even then it feels like the trader flip stuff so limited. It's mostly the like flip a stuff is limited, yes. So like in the video I said like it doesn't matter now. It literally doesn't matter at all right now. At right. all. Like right. hatchet hatchet runners aren't a thing because it's so late wipe. Everyone's got hundred mil. That's not yeah. that's not true, but a lot of players have got hundred mil and players that are like there's a couple of new players that that are starting and playing the game and some people who are casual on the game. Yeah, that's <clears throat> that just is the case. But a lot of the people who would be hatchet running normally are not playing Tarkov now. And the people who are still playing Tarkov, the majority of them are higher level and don't need to. So hatchet running is just a non, no, no problem. The, the reason why it's an issue, and with the trader flips too, is that trader flipping takes the early game to the mid game. And that's where it stops because of the restrictions on the flip. So it allows you to buy right, right. 855 ammo, which now is you know, it's Peacekeeper 3, right? Yeah. But it'll make 855 ammo much cheaper. It'll make PS much cheaper uh, for 762, which again is Prapple 3. So, you know, normally you have to like forage and raid for those things up until getting to Prapple 3 and it makes the early game really cool. You'll be able to get MP7 FMJ. You'll be able to get CVJ for 300 blackout. That's a powerful round. But it's like one of the most powerful yeah. that's still on the flea. There's quite a few that are like in that. It's like not quite meta, but they're like mid game. And I think, I just personally think it'll just gut the early game like completely. Well, yeah, I think, um, I think it's detrimental too because it makes, I suspect those will actually be very expensive because the people that reach them faster will then sell them on the market for an upsell because they can just buy at every reset and it's like effectively free money in their pockets. Yeah, so that's the two, there's two ends to the problem. It's like the supply of this. So right now, FM, MP7 FMJ is like rare. It is scarce. Mm-hmm. Like where do you go to get MP7 FMJ? You just bump into it randomly and like mm-hmm. ammo shack, right? You get like 46 bullets from woods that one time and sell it <laughs> on the flea. It's like it's really, really rare and it goes for like 3k a bullet. Yeah. When people can get to right wherever it is mechanic four whatever mechanic three because people mm. will get there quite early. like some, some people will get there early yeah. you've got the like it's literally just a supply and demand thing you've got yeah. the ammo that spawned in the raid exactly like it did before mm-hmm. and now you have some percentage of the community that is able to flip 120 rounds on right. the fleet. it's like the supply is what it was plus this extra bit like the price yeah. will go down it will be yeah. lower yeah definitely um, and so it'll be much more affordable, and that's going to be the same as all the others, like you know, PS, right. say, PS, MH55, and all this stuff. And I just think it's going to make like it'll just make all the early armors worthless. Um, it'll just skip us to the mid game. Like right. maybe it's not terrible. Maybe maybe it won't matter that much. But I just think it'll be a shame because I think a lot of the early game stuff will just be null and void once you get to level fifty. Yeah, no, I, I agree. With you. I see. What, yeah, I see because like especially prior, 
there was no mid game because you skip straight to the light stuff. Like it was like it was yeah. like a Golnix nine nine five was like the you know the stuff you would do, mm -hmm. but to, 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 to you know walk just a few steps back. It's it it's it will be interesting to see what have what players how they behave like will because I think previously you were like there's a lot incentive to the hatchet run because you could basically like why run at mid kits when I could just do a hatchet run get a, mm. something a rare value item sell it and then run a high end kit you know what I mean yeah um so I wonder if maybe now that presumably let's just assume there is no trader or there is still trader flipping. Um, you know, will people be incentivized to hatchet run to to run like you know good kits in the mid game, so to speak? Like they're not high end kits, but they're yeah. like good for early to mid. Maybe I'm not sure. Maybe I don't know. I, yeah, the, I guess the only other aspect would be like to hatchet run to like do hideout upgrades. Like you know, maybe you're you know it's just, it's just like a time efficiency thing. Maybe you're like able to maybe you work from home and you're able to like be on call but you know you can't like play actual tarkov so you're just gonna like instead of like maybe you do a scav run maybe you do a hatchet run in between like you know sure whatever but at least yeah. it's not gonna be where it was back in the day where you could just like buy in-game stuff you know what i mean because that was like kind of mm -hmm. also the problem with hatchet running is not necessarily entirely that how the mechanics work but because of the surrounding systems it's like you could just zero risk do a you know play the game quote unquote and then flip turn that into like yeah. free money essentially like it's not free but you know yeah you have to like do some time work but it's like there's no risk for it and you can basically like you can play it with like your headset off because it literally doesn't matter yeah but like, there's no downside other than just time and unlike a scav run you can just play pmc over and over and over and you always spawn in at zero zero mm -hmm. so the loot's always there like it's, yeah, it's, you know, it's yeah. scav run plus for many for many aspects the only the only thing that i would say about it that's like a little different um to like back 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 in the day is that finding raid is still in existence for quests so yes you will have to hatch it you could hatch it run for like money or for hideout upgrades mm -hmm. like you do need a ledx for the hideout but you can't get the ledx for whatever that request is on um for therapists to get the thick case that right, you need right. that finding raid so questing you won't be able to do as a hatchet runner but like for money sure. you will be able to so it's like okay part of the incentive is gone you can't Partly. get through the quest with hatchet run equipment anymore obviously unless you survive but you know, the money is like you know a big it's the bigger one i think that's that's what i was gonna say like i don't know like if you're already hatchet running i don't know how much you actually care about progressing the game naturally you know as intended through questing you know what i mean like mm -hmm. Maybe maybe it's one of those things like as you play the game more, then you start to care more, so then you start to do it. You know, I don't know. I personally never really felt like hatchet running was going to be the thing for me. Like it just didn't really appeal to me. It just kind of was like, uh, this isn't like how I want to play the game. Like this isn't yeah. fun for me. But I, you know, I could. It's definitely like it's like a multitude of things. It's like sunk cost fallacy plus like being efficient for your time like i don't know there's mm. like so many things you could look at it you know it's like why why risk something for the chance to lose it when i could risk nothing and have everything in game so there's like a anyways i don't want to i don't yeah. want to like it depends right on anymore. how you think psycholo psychologically yeah for yeah sure. yeah for sure but yeah like, it's like it's 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 not the same but it is tangentially related to the way that i used to play a lot of the quests which is like you know lie in a bush for 40 minutes and like do other stuff and then come yeah. back and like do it right because i was so yeah. tired like it's less, i'm less like that now but you know that that was a my response to the way the game is built and my own like lifetime pressures mm -hmm, it's just mm -hmm. like okay this is the most efficient way for me to do this like yeah. my in raid time actually doesn't even matter like i'm either not doing it or i'm getting a shot every 40 minutes with like no players there so i can just like speed through and do this thing like real fast yeah um, to try and maximize my like irl time i'm happy to sit in a bush and wait because I'm doing, I'm, I was already doing other stuff anyway. Um, so yeah, it's just like it's a, it's sort of tangentially related to that. It's like depends on how you think and what what you value and you know whether you're you know. It's yeah, exactly. Yeah, I feel like right, I, let's I, move on. <laughs> I feel like I naturally do this, like kind of sort of like dilly dally to my quest location. You know what I mean? It's like I don't want to be the first one day one of the wipe going for a pocket watch. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm gonna take my time. So yeah, I think it's very natural. Exactly. 
So we'll see. It's a good, a good thing overall, I think. Um, new hideout rooms. Basically, I, I couldn't tell whether there were two rooms for this. They showed two different shots. There was one which was like much more obviously like some kind of ritual room or like cultist room or something. It was basically like a cult effigy burning thing in the middle, like you usually find in these like cult rooms. And then there was a different one as well. I don't know whether you can find it like on the fly. I don't know whether they even showed pictures of it. But I wasn't sure if it was like the same. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't sure if it was the same room with like two different levels of upgrade or something. I'm, oh, I'm not really I, sure. I do see it here, actually. Yeah, I'm pulling it who, up. Who knows what's going to happen in this hideout room, though? Like the cult room. There you go. Cult zone in the hideout. So one, it looks like, I don't even know what that is. It's like, is that, is that the same room as the other one? Um, let's see. Like, it's just like two seats. It's like a. And then this thing? It looks like it. I mean, it's a different room, it looks like. Yeah, I think it's a different room. Maybe, maybe they're a part of the same room. So there's like a I don't know. gate fence, uh, a great gate door that swings open. So maybe that's tied. Like, what's, that? what's the other room, though? Somewhere. Uh, let's see. There's cardboard here. No cardboard there. It's got to be. It's got to. It's oh wait, there's a there's a a metal door like, that yeah. kind of looks like the gym metal door. So maybe I'm not sure. Maybe this is maybe it maybe it's part of the gym that like connects to the shooting range, or maybe just a new area. I'm not yeah, sure. Maybe. I don't, yeah, I really don't know, and I've got no clue what's going to happen in this ritual room thing. I've no idea. Um, I can't I I can't even speculate at this point. Craft what, what, <laughs> Craft a summonable cultist to spawn and raid. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I really don't know. Mark from some kind of scav case. Yeah, I, I, I have no idea. I really don't know. But anyway, that's coming. They've got some new guns. So we knew about the M60 already. Big boy. We talked about that last week, I'm pretty sure. Big boy. Belt fed. You know. So this, that one's got a different mag on it. It's got like an actual metal box mag. The mm -hmm. other one that they had was like, it had like a sort of fabric piece over it. I'm not sure really what the difference is between those things. So we'll, we'll see. We'll find out in game. They've got like a bunch of cool animations. It looks really sick. Um, just going to bypass that by taking the weapon out of my hands and just reloading it with right click reload <laughs> menu. But don't worry about that. That's fine. Um, <laughs> then they've got the Uzi, which is coming, which is yes. pretty neat. Looks like there's lots of different variants. The ability to fold it, unfold it, like lots of mods for it. Like, it looks cool. It actually looks pretty cool. Uzi's pretty fun. Um, then the other one that they showed was the SR3M. There was a video for that. I was I I didn't know what it was when it first came up, and the, and the then some reworked animations for the Val. I think they said, but yeah, I was like, oh, this looks like the SR2M. People were like, yes, yeah, the SR3M. I was like, oh, okay. Um, it looks cool though. It's like a. It's like he took a SR2 and a Val, and like hmm. they had a baby, and this is what came out. They yeah, because I think this one. Baby. I think this one is 9 by 39 like the Val yeah. and the BSS, but the SR2 version, I yeah. think, is basically how it is. I, I, I believe that's the case anyway. Um, and I think there was, um, I think it was like Spin Man who mentioned it in my chat, it was just like, oh, the mag's different on the Val or whatever. There's like a black mag. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So maybe they'll add in a few more mags. Because like right now it's really limited, right? It's like 10 rounders. These that that one that we're showing right the now, which is like the sort of purple, the purpley twenty, and then there's yeah. the super omega expensive like gray like thirty rounder. Yeah, but there might be like a black twenty rounder now. It looks like maybe maybe or something like that. I don't, I don't know. Um, like that one there. Yeah, they're showing see it now. It. Yeah, so it's different. It's different to what we've got in existence right now, which is neat. Um, and then he mentioned that the Desert Eagle is coming to the game, which is just cool. It's just cool. It's a, I just it's a classic gamer gun. It's just so iconic, right? It's yeah, like yeah. <clears throat> Counter Strike. It's just very iconic. That's where I first used that in CS, and it's just, mm -hmm. it's just this is awesome. So that's really really nice. Then he was talking about um, how they're going to overhaul factory. Yeah, which is interesting. He did put a poll up about this about factory overhaul, custom expansion, lighthouse expansion. Everyone picked lighthouse. He talked about a factory overhaul maybe he was going to do it anyway um let me see my like slightly more detailed notes on it because he he kind of said oh, i didn't actually write much about it but he basically said on the cast that they were going to pretty much scrap factory as it is they're going to keep it as some kind of like legacy mode just for you know just for old time's sake or whatever 
and they're going to redo it. And I don't know exactly what I need to go back and listen to what he said about it specifically, mm-hmm. but I'm interested in what they're going to do here because Factory, as we know it, is part of Custom. The expansion yeah. that they did to Factory actually breaks. It's like one <laughs> of the few places that it, like it breaks the way that the map should look because Factory. Factory, for a start, is in two very tall towers, right? And you can see out of the roof of Factory. So, like, fa- the Factory map has never really made sense from like a world-building perspective, and the expansion doesn't make sense at all because the actual original floor pa- plan of Factory matches the in-game map, and then that also matches the building on Customs, the in-game map for Customs. Which, With the expansion for, on it, it doesn't match anymore. For, for reference, as I understood it, that map or that building on Customs that is Factory is at old gas past the red gate basically Correct. okay yeah so it's outside of old gas it's the two tall towers that are linked by a bridge and there's like some red lights on the roof and uh yeah that floor plan makes sense on on the map before the expansion and the expansion kind of broke it plus also we see it like in the raid series they enter factory this is like one of the early on in the in the raid series they enter factory from the outside and there's like a courtyard area. It's sort of like, not necessarily a courtyard, but like there'll be like a you know, courtyard area kind of thing, like some sort of bit outside. So it'd actually be kind of cool if factory was almost like within the, I don't know, the chain link fence or something. I guess almost like, almost like, I mean, not really, but almost like a mini interchange. You know what I mean? Like a tiny interchange. You've got like mm-hmm, outside mm-hmm. area maybe, or you start like just outside in like a little area and then you like move in to the map. Like that'd be kind of neat. So I'm interested to see what they do with it. And they might be doing this because it's it, like maybe it's necessary for map to map travel to like work and make sense. Maybe because right now you'd have to be able to go through old gas through customs and then go into go- either gate three or gate zero. A seller's like God knows where that connects to, um, or the medical extract. It's like you'd have to like go in through one of those doors. So it's almost like too tight to work as a map, really. Um, I like. I wouldn't want to be running miles in like you do with uh, factory. Is this, which one is this? Is this Tarkin? Yeah. Yes. So I just pulled up a, a classic Tarkin video. If, if anybody hasn't gone to watch the videos on the YouTube channel Tarkin, T A R K I N, I don't know who this guy is, but he's just like a god amongst men in terms of modding, like redoing stuff, whatever. His his videos are amazing. If you like yeah. EFT, you will definitely like these things. They're just uh, this is so they're, cool. they're, they're just fun. Um, the video that Church is showing is he goes into the office on Factory and this guy's like, he's rendered the outside of of Factory. It's like into customs. So you can see into old gas, like or the way it should be out of the office window, yeah. which is like so sick. Um, some of his stuff's really funny. It's like, on one, I think on one of the videos, he like spawns the BTR into Factory or whatever. And it's just like, <laughs> yeah. doesn't, he like drives it up into the office, like <laughs> through the wall and the stupid stuff like that. He did one about the hideout cat recently. Like he's got 60,000 subscribers so you know he's there's a lot yeah. of people that know about his stuff now but he's done so many so many cool videos you could like yeah. easily binge on them and they're all 20 seconds to like two minutes long yeah like mostly yeah. none of them are that long so it's very easy to just like watch his content tarkov um, ray trace is a really good one if you want to see some like you know screenery beauty mm-hmm. just, that one looks really good i like yeah. the one in particular where he's got like the dot the filing cabinet and he pulls it out and it just keeps going and going and going <laughs> yeah. and then hits the wall on the other side <laughs> yeah there's some really clever funny stuff yeah it's, yeah it's, it's, like, great, it's really clever great creator really really good there's like the one with the pmc skateboarding with like the fisheye lens and yeah yeah, yeah. like they're just like they're so so good i don't know how he comes up with the ideas for this. he does have he does have this like one of his really old ones is like a sort of spoof one about like quality, like things that you can do in Tarkov UI that you never knew about. And this is like before he was really that well known, which is like you know drag selecting on multiple items to drop them in a box and stuff like mm-hmm. this. And like loads of people are just like no way, and it's like no, you can't do this. It's just like, but it looks so convincing because he's you know, yeah done his magic to make it all look you know all look real. Ah, uh, it's good. Yeah, big shout out to Tarkin. What a what a cool creator. Like honestly, one of the coolest creators in the Tarkin. Really, really. Cool. Yep. Oh God. So they're adding mines, trip wires. <laughs> And the ability to basically booby trap bodies and containers. And there's a <laughs> there's a boss for this, yeah. which is I think people what's he called? He's called Partisan. I believe. Why does that name sound familiar? And lots of people are joking about it's actually gonna be General Sam, but it's Party Sam. 
um, that's why like these random pictures appearing on Twitter. It's becoming a bit, little bit of a meme. But anyway, it's going to be a new boss called Partisan, and he's going to be like doing mines and stuff. But apparently, you're going to be able to disarm. Yeah. So, so exactly how that's going to work, I don't really know. I mean, I'm personally hoping this comes with a rework of the claymores up on Lighthouse. Personally, that would be we'll nice. See. Yeah, <laughs> that would be cool. But uh, I mean, my overall initial gut instinct of this is just like fail L. Who asked? <laughs> like, well, just why? Uh, it just doesn't seem good. But this apparently he's the boss who's going to hunt you down if you have low PMC calm, mm -hmm. which is this like unknown secret mechanic where they're going to, if you do bad things, then they're going to hunt you down, like sitting around the extract. So extract camping is going to like tick down your PMC karma invisibly in the background, and then you're just going to suddenly get assaulted by this partisan dude or something. I'm not really sure, but being able to booby trap bodies is pretty funny. You, know, you yeah. leave like a PMC out in the open and booby trap it. Like, Our containers. Blow up. Like, like honestly, I, I didn't yeah. hear about those two features specifically. Um, but yeah, I mean that. Like, I I kind of like this. It just it really comes down to how they integrate it and how you can engage with it. Because if it's anything like how you currently engage with land mining land wars, like it's disgusting. I do not want it. Like I do not want. Yeah, I just don't want invisible mines that can blow me up. Yeah, and I mean the way that you like, engage with the no. system right now is a a very short trip back to the lobby. Like it's that awful. is the mechanic. It's like. Awful. Invulnerable claymores, like you can't like I just ugh. everything about yeah. it is just like gross. But like if if it's actually something you can like engage with that's mm -hmm. not one dimensional, like this sounds great. And the fact that you can like booby trap bodies and containers, like that honestly sounds like a lot of fun. Like, Have luck defusing my level fifty one elite bomb. <laughs> like try to like snip the right wire, like <laughs> oh no, I'm only level three. <laughs> There's like a mini game that comes up. It's like a Rubik's cube of like yeah. and wires. <laughs> you just gotta like hack it. Yeah. It's Although like, it's stack rats one, it's like super complex. <laughs> like, <you know. laughs> so so uh, funny. Yeah, but yeah I think, no, I don't I think know. this is kind of cool. I like it. Very personally. very controversial. Like this is the thing yeah, people are worried sure. because it's BSG has a history of introducing these things that are just like ass. It's a bit like the GL, yeah. right? And stuff like that, like flash the flashbang chaos oh, yeah. 23 yeah. bullet. Like, yeah, it's, it's annoying, gimmicky, like uncountable crap, which is yes. why people are, yes, a bit if it's concerned. anything like that, then yeah, I absolutely am not interested yeah. at all. It will, and then it will get nerfed the into oblivion and it'll be, you know, locked behind level 50 <laughs> traders. Just you know, complete with, you know, this, uh, light keep request line that that's like level 79 20. requirement. So yeah, we'll see. Um, and then the last one on my like main list of stuff that I was pretty sure he said was coming like soon, uh, maybe in the wipe itself. Uh, let me actually just check if this one is. But this is the zooming thing for LPVOs. Really, and I missed optics. this. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't yeah, catch this I don't know. This, so this came. This was he was talking about this for later. He, so he talked about point fifteen, and then later he talked about August. There'll be an arena patch, custom preset creator, TwitchCon San Diego, September, huge events in October. And then he said after that he said, oh. We're changing, like, we're having smooth zooming of scopes. So this is getting into the more, cool. like, longer-term speculative stuff. Like, this probably isn't coming in 15, I don't mm -hmm. think, but we'll see. We'll see. But, like, that's, that's been a long time coming, you know? Being able to yeah. zoom the voodoo smoothly from 1 to 8. Not just... Oh, sorry, yeah, 1 to 6, sorry. Um, I mean, it'll probably go up further than that, right? It's, it's like, at the minute, it's locked from one, mm -hmm. 1 times, 6 times. We'll see how they implement it, but... I quite like the idea of that. I think that'd be good. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be yeah. Cool. So then there's like a few other random things that were mentioned that I put like down in the slightly lower level for the time being, being like, it sounded like there were longer term stuff that may come, but may not. Who knows these days? Uh, one was hardcore mode, which he said was like being designed. I guess this is like having a separate hardcore character, only being able to play against other players playing hardcore. Because as we've that'd said a million times, the problem right now is that you play hardcore, you mm. die five times in a row, you finally manage to find a gun and you get lucky and you kill some guy and he's got meta gear on and then you've got meta gear for the rest of your hardcore playthrough. And it's not very uh, rewarding. It's like, it's fine, it's okay, and it's hard because everybody, but everyone's also got like insane kits compared to yeah. you as well, always. And if you lose that kit, you're back to square one. It's like very imbalanced. It's like mm -hmm. zero to hero all the time because of the way it is. And yeah, it's just yeah. weird. So having, knowing that everybody else is equipment all actually came from the raid nothing came from the traders like oh man it'd be so cool you'd see all sorts of crazy guns like yeah, literally pieced yeah. together from the raid like i think it'd be really <laughs> sick and, and it's not going to be for everybody which is why right right whenever anybody's talking about like delete the fleet i'm like no delete the fleet is not the answer. 
Like the game is too hard without the flea and it's too annoying without the flea to play all the time like that. Like you need another game mode, hardcore mode. It's basically going to be for like, you know, Tarkov lifers, you played eight wipes, like you want a bit of a challenge, go and play hardcore, like you know yeah. all the spawns are. Like playing hardcore mode as a new player, you just wouldn't ever get anywhere. Playing it as a, playing normal as a 10 wipe guy, it's like kind of, you know, the same old, right? So it's like, this hopefully would bridge the gap. And people always go, but I'll split the player base. Like, yes, it will. I'm sorry, it's worth it. I don't care. <laughs> split the player base. I'm not, I don't, I don't care. I actually don't care. Yeah, uh, I mean, you could even just reduce the number of PMCs, right? Like, it doesn't need to be as many PMCs yeah. on the map in hardcore either. Like, stuff like that. Like, it's just not as, it's not necessary to have PvP all over the place. People spawn sniping each other right off the bat. Like, you just don't yeah. need it. You'd almost have half the PMCs, and the game would be like so cool. It'd be like halfway between Tarkov and like DayZ or whatever. It'd be like so neat, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I think it's nice because it's like more, it gives more options for players. Like, you know, if you want a more challenging experience to also play with people who are taking on the same type of challenge you know then you, mm. you have that because that is kind of the um problem with doing it on your own um so i like that it's like more and then that means that they can really you know do a bit more with certain ideas like if they want to do something that's a bit too out there they could maybe send it towards the hardcore side of things you know and if they want to do something that's maybe a, a bit more accessible like you know I don't know what that may look like in BSG's terms. Maybe you get like a free AK. <laughs> Here's your wooden AK stock. Go go die on customs, you know. <laughs> then they could just yeah. send that to the the regular game or whatever, you know. And it's not like a hard mm -hmm. like it, it kind of gives them more flexibility, and I like that. So I, I'm, I'd be again, it's definitely not going to be for everyone. So, but it's totally opt in, opt out, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I think that would be sick. And. uh yeah, it's like if you're already in, in hardcore, right, you're already basically saying like, check the box. Yes, I would like to be kicked in the balls. Yes, I definitely agree. <laughs> that is what I want. Um, I want to hurt myself. I do consent. I do consent. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, those people can be abused, me, you know, me amongst them. That's like kind of what that, that mode is for. I'd be, yeah. I'd be very interested just to see what like the emerging gameplay of that would be because, you know, without the trade, I guess you'd still have the hideout and stuff, but like, could, like, can you imagine? Like, you wouldn't even need to, I just don't really think you'd need, do you need to really wipe it that often either. Like, Finishing the hideout would take like an ungodly amount of time with yeah. without the fleet. Like, yeah. I know some people get capped really fast, but like that's doing the quest. Like, and I say I say really fast. It even takes like gods at the game because we talked about this a bit before, right? Somebody's saying, "Oh, you know, you should you should go for go for capper." It only took Sheaf, you know, twenty streams or whatever. I'm just like, yes, twenty twenty twelve hour streams. <laughs> Like, yeah, that's like 250. Like, you know. and it's the one person who has like a bajillion hours in the game, and you know, it's probably and like, is insane, yeah, you know, probably like in the top 100 players ever in Tarkov, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And it's like it still took them 200 and whatever hours, and yeah. like, yeah, so uh, but yeah, like it would take forever, right? You wouldn't be able to like Bitcoin farm, you'd have to like go and find all the GPUs if you wanted to complete it, like it would just take an eternity. It was just like it's a lot of content because, and mm -hmm. you would like always on the search for stuff maybe maybe it get boring because you're always searching for yeah like, but maybe i don't know maybe not i don't know like this, I'd be, that's the thing i'm fascinated to see like what the what it ends up sure. as. Like, what's the status sure. quo at the end like are there people who are just chatting around like is that yeah. possible people min max loot spawns whatever to end up with like in-game gear I don't, I don't know it could it could be something know. that never really needs to be white it could be something that's uh you know one of those things like oh i'm you know basically done with my normal tarkov adventure mm. let me three months, four months in the wife, let me play hardcore until the game wipes again, then I'll go back. You know, it may, may be something very niche, like it's whatever, but I think it's, yeah. I think it's worth doing. It might, it, again, it might, it might, maybe it's a complete waste, but I don't know. I feel like there's a, there's a sec of Tarkov urs that are like really, you know, really into it, mm -hmm. um, like the game and they like, they want more, like harder Nikita. <laughs> It can mm -hmm. be harder. So I, exactly. I think there is a market for it, if you will. Definitely. The next one is, and he's talked about this a bit now, ability to use the stash while searching for a game. It really sounds like they're thinking about it. I hope to God they do. Like, I've had so multiple copies. Like, I, I've talked about this on one of my videos. So this is, you know, you're searching for a match and you can still use your stash, you can still use the traders, you can still use the fleet. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people are just like, why don't they just fix the match? And it's just like, I don't think they can. Like, for one reason or another. And secondly, 
half the time you're waiting for wooden PCs to load it. It's not even yeah. necessarily BSG's fault. Like, yeah, they could load the, they could optimize the loading, but like some, yeah, you know, some people are on HDDs. It's like magnetic discs yeah. loading it, whatever. There's like there's a limit to how much they can optimize this stuff so that you have to load in. You know, there's a lot of as we've seen. There's you know, you fill out the VRAM, whatever. There's a lot of textures to be loaded in, and it's going for the hard drive it takes a long time. You sat there for two minutes waiting for players sometimes, and uh, astounding. So you're not even on factory, you're just like, dude, like how slow is your machine? Like, come on, can we like play this factory raid? Like, this is crazy. It's not even that much to load. So. This means that they, like, obviously the, the matching times aren't really ideal, but, and it's, yeah, it's less matching, it's more just loading. But it wouldn't matter anywhere near so much if you can use the, if you can use the flea. It'd be crazy. crazy. Yeah. I mean, just the stash alone would be extremely helpful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I hope they do that. He's talked about it a bit, so it does sound like they would do it. Um, <clears throat> he's, he mentioned... Search in stash. Yeah. I don't know whether that was because somebody said it in chat and he just thought, oh, that's a good idea. Or it was something they'd already thought about and he got reminded by what someone said in chat. I don't know. But like, search in stash would be really cool. Because stuff gets lost in there all the time. You yeah. know, like, like with ammo, I, I use mags as like my ammo retrieval tool. I never go searching for it in my cases anymore. I'm just like, right click, load, top up, split stack, top up. Like, <laughs> And then at the end of the day, I just like put all my ammo, just dump them all in a box, like layered deep in a load of bags or something. So is, that, yeah, that'd be good. This is uh, yeah, just a quick tangent up, um, that's related. Someone, I don't remember how, but someone's talking about SPT mods in the Scav Talk, the Scav Talk Discord. And then I just went on like a little mini rabbit hole and was looking at some of the mods. And uh, some of the Quiet Life stuff was like really cool. There was one where you could like, um, Basically, like it would with quick move to container, you would just need to open your scav junk box and control click any compatible item to have it instantly teleport to that container. So it's like, I guess you could, like, ah, I wish, I wish I, you know, everyone could see the pictures, but it was like, it looked really cool because, like, you could assign certain, you know, properties to the thing. And then when you leave the ray, you just control click and then boom, everything just like warps mm. into the places. And yeah, that was like. Uh, it's it just cool to see. Um, so hopefully they, you know, do more stuff like that. Um, there was another really cool one that's like, you know, again, tangentially related, but not really. But you could like, it basically into, implemented a daisy like looting system where you like mm -hmm. you press tab near objects and then everything within that area shows up oh. in its own little, you know, fake loot container. And then you could just loot it. I was like, dude, that's so cool that they like were able to like. Rig that through modding magic. <laughs> mm. So there's like some, you know, black magic being applied. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. There was, some, there was something that did sound like it had come straight from SPT. I can't remember what it was. There was something. Or maybe, maybe we'll bump into it in a bit. I don't remember. Um, the next one was continuous healing. So, i.e., you get shot in the arm with Magnum Buckshot and your, your body is 33, 82 blacked out arm this one's 31 stomach's like you know whatever like everything's got you know a couple of points of damage because of the spillover and then you have to go so they were three points so they were two points so they were one point continuous yeah. healing basically being what they have in arena breakout which is you press the button it goes like heal 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 within the as long as you've got enough heal within that animation timing i guess because each, mm -hmm. each med has an amount that it heals right um, yeah. as a max so it'll probably be like that and I guess yeah. you, you'll still be able to heal the thorax but then it'll heal the other stuff if you've got enough points so like I think um, an AI2 only heals 50 I think so if mm -hmm. it, it'll probably like run out at that stage and you'll have to like use it again I, I guess but yeah it stops you having to use just one point on off each thing so that's really really good because yeah. it's really annoying right it's like one of the main reasons I think why people use propitols because uh, it just like fixes that tick up because you get like on each body part and you don't have to do it which is very very cool yeah, just to like speak a bit more on this, I not, I think not only is it a quality of life thing, but I think it's also like mechanically gameplay relevant because I'm trying to find the actual numbers here. Um, but like the Grizzly, for example, has actually quite a lot of healing to it. Mm. Um, I don't know what the numbers are. I think I want to say it's, it's like two hundred actually. Like yeah, it's way more than like eighty five because the Salera is eighty five specifically, and yes. there's no situation in the game right now where that's relevant because that just heals everything to full. Like so, even your thorax is the biggest HP pool. If it has one, you're healing eighty four. So the Salera is one, 
sorry, I found it. 175 is the total. Yeah, okay, so it. it's a lot. So you could heal like multiple limbs all the way up with a grizzly. It would actually make the grizzly better than the Celera in certain circumstances, which yes. right now isn't really the case. The healing speed is technically faster on the grizzly because it's 175. If you're only healing 80 on the thorax, it doesn't take as long as a Celera to fill it up, but like it's fractional. Like it doesn't, it's not. It's not a big enough difference for it to matter. Well, this is interesting too. <laughs> something I didn't realize is, according to the wiki, the car kit, Lewa, Ifac, Afect all have a three second use time, which I don't know. I don't know if that's like the total animation or like the. I assume that's the time of the healing, right? Like, I don't think that Can't accounts remember. for the a total animation of like pulling it out. Because, like, here it lists the AI2 for two-second use time, which, like, mm. there's no way the animation for me pulling out the thing, picking up the needle, you know, flipping open the case, and then sticking in, and healing yeah. is two seconds. So I think it's just the heal time. But my point is, the Grizzly is a five-second use time, which, like, you don't really ever use that fully. Maybe that does make it the same, then. Yeah. Let's see, five divided by 175. Human calculator, what is that? <laughs> oh. Sorry. <laughs> or sorry, one seventy five divided by five. That's a more proper. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it on the calculator. No, don't cheat. No, it's, you're it's the human 35. calculator now. It's thirty five. Thirty five. Okay, so like eighty five divided by three. That's like what twenty seven. Twenty eight. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's slightly quicker. Slightly quicker. Yeah. And you get more H. So yeah, I don't know. It, for me, it would. It kind of makes the balancing a bit more interesting because Grizzly always felt like a little because it was kind of undervalued. Like it was like. Hmm. A more expensive Slayer, but you really weren't getting a lot more for it. Arguably, yeah. you might be getting less because it's bulkier, it's heavier. You know, you have to have a rig appropriate. So, I like this. Like, this potentially could make more options more enticing. Mm. I see. I hadn't thought about that. It's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, if you get like blasted, you might be able to heal just everything in one go with the Grizzly. Yeah, cool. yeah. Um, the only other part about this that I have written down is just like him talking about the post-release because somebody said like oh you're going to continue to support Tarkov post-release he was like yes of course we've got like all these DLCs coming and stuff um, and he's talked about these a bit before but he you know it's good to hear him repeat these things and actually put them in slightly more concrete terms which is that DLC 1 is going to be this thing called Scav Life and then the DLC 2 is going to be the Clans DLC lots of people thought you said Clowns which was so <laughs> so funny that was so funny on the cast. Everyone was just like, <laughs> clown DLC? What the hell? People were like, oh yeah, it's the Unheard Edition was already the clown DLC. But <laughs> oh. it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was funny. But yeah, the cl clan, clan DLC is the one that's coming, not, not the clown DLC. Can you imagine if he does just drop the clown DLC out of nowhere? That'd be so funny. Oh my word. That'd be good. So, yeah, that'd be good. I guess there'll be like clan stashes and stuff like that, I imagine. But like, if we, see, I mean, that's a long way off, right? But this is like past 1.0. Yeah, yeah. So. The Scav Life one sounds pretty intriguing, though. Like, it, there could be a lot of potential there. I've always kind of yeah. liked the idea of playing entire wipe as a Scav, you know, but it's like, it's not really feasible like you can, mm. but it's it's not really feasible and it's not necessarily fun because you have to sit there and wait for your Scav timer. Time there. And... Yeah. So if they have something where, like, you can effectively role play as a, as a permanent Scav in the world, like, I don't know, that could be fun. Yeah, like Scav map to map travel and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, it'd be, yeah, it'd be cool. You, it'd be you, cool. Your traders are now scab bosses. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be so cool. There's so much yeah, different factions and stuff because there's loads of factions. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but it's like, so that's, that's really like, mm, that's really mainly the, the, the big points that I had. I mean, that's taken us so long to get through already. It's like, how, mm -hmm. how far are we in? Like, nearly, yeah, we're basically two hours basically, in or whatever. Yeah. Like, there was a couple of random, like, if I just like skim through, there's like random other stuff that he mentioned, like, where was the one that I was trying to find? Um, yeah, there's like a cultist jacket coming where you can like raise and lower the hood. <laughs> oh yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, yeah. Which is like just a lot of people. It's strange. I think a lot of people want like Sturman's jacket, for example. So I, of course, I think this is like a fine one yeah. at it. <laughs> I think you'll be able to begging. change tactical devices by holding down a button, so you don't have to like click, 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 click through. Especially if there's like multiple options, you might be able to like hold T. And then it'll be like, you know, laser, laser plus flashlight, blah, blah, blah. You'll be able to just like change it to the mode you want directly in the menu. Because he said that alongside huh. the whole G to do the grenades. Um, 
And then he said something else about guns in containers won't be 100% durability anymore. Which is interesting. That's cool. I kind of so, like that. Yeah, I kind of like that as well. So the only 100% guns you're going to be able to get is from the traders. Mm-hmm. And then the ones in Raid are all going to be like various durabilities. Mm, maybe I don't like that. <laughs> On second thought. I don't know. Like it's... I'm not sure. Like it's... It's, uh, it's, fi- it's fine, I think. Yeah. I would almost want it the other way around, but I'm, I'm not sure... Yeah, it's hard to say well, which how one that would, would be better yeah, or I worse, know. or what's the pros and cons. But I like the, I like the initiative to do something that could that yeah. sounds interesting on paper. You know what I mean? I kind of almost like I could almost like the idea of having the trader one at like ninety five mm-hmm. or something. So you could find the rare hundred out in the wild. Yeah, yeah. You know, like the trader one is like decent. Like it's it's pretty good, but it's not mm. like perfect. Um, yeah. Or maybe you can pay like way more for hundred percent. I don't know. You could have like various grades, I guess, from the traders. You pay like a lot more for like actually a hundred percent version. I don't know. It'd be, it'd be interesting. But yeah, he, talk, he actually talked a little bit also about like a head, the headset balance. But I was like, I think that was already done. So I'm not really sure what else they're gonna do. Um, and is that? I mean, yeah, there's like, oh yeah, you might be able to like view the inventory of other party members. That's when he, I think when he was talking about um, being able to. Like look at stuff while you're loading in, and just like see your party members' inventory, so you can like go through and like look at what everybody's stash looks like and stuff. That'd be like kind of kind of neat. I think it'd be kind of fun to like look at what people have have in their stash and like mm-hmm. have you organize it. It'd be like no, kind we... of fun to be able to like see it in your own like through your own UI, not just have to like, look at their screen. <laughs> That'd be just pretty neat. Belittle your or uh, you know barrage your uh, teammates for their yeah. butter messy stash. <laughs> Oh, and there was a, well, something he said right at the end. One of the last things he said was about kill cams. He said they've like kind mm. of come to some sort of conclusion on like how to do it. Because originally he said no, right? And I think he said no yeah. to Nice Guy, and Nice Guy was like, "Yeah, Nikita says it's just not possible, um, and it's too much work or whatever." And he's like, he said, "Actually, we thought of a way, and that we think we might have a way of doing it." It was like kind of, you know, huh. it's again, it's speculative, but it's like back on the cards as a maybe. That Those could be are interesting. Some like random bits, yeah, yeah. I wonder, I wonder, I'd like to know the details of how they, because I'm sure it's like a multifaceted issue. It's like, how do we store the data? You know, it's like going to add overhead. How much work is this actually going to be? You know, I got to like pay my employees and we got to get this project done. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, what's like an official way we can do this? You know, I'm sure there's like a lot of like stuff to juggle there. So I wonder what, maybe if they like used a new system. Or like a pre-existing system, and like you know, have some like clever way to make it work, you know. Yeah, because they've they've also got the advantage of like it's always with these things, you know. When you do it the second time, you can do it the way that you wanted to do it. Because like the first time you make some mistakes, like they've already done it once in Arena now using their engine. So maybe they've gone like, okay, well from that, and this is what I was hoping Arena would do, you know when we talked about it before it even released, was they tried some stuff and have gone, okay, we know how we made it work in Arena, but if we did this or that and the other, now, now with the benefit of hindsight, like actually maybe we could fit it into Dark Ops, but we'd have to make these changes. Like when you have never done, when you haven't done it yet, it's very hard to tell, right? Because you're mm-hmm. not, you don't know what, there's certain problems that you run into that you're just never going to be able to predict until you just do it and then run into it. So they've done that bit already. And so now they can go, okay, we know here's the pitfalls can we solve these things for the base game? Okay, maybe we can. It's like less of a, you know, big question mark. It's like, do I want to commit people to this project first time to try and, you know, do this thing if I don't know if it's even going to be, like, successful or whatever? Mm-hmm. I don't know. So, who knows? Maybe we'll be able to see our, our killers after the raid or something. It's, it sounds like there's some, some way of making this work, maybe eventually. I'd like that. Good. Yeah. I, I feel like there'd be, it'd be a nice... Quality of life, they do it in an appropriate manner. I do think there's rightfully so concerns about ghosting where you die in a squad and then you watch the kill cam instantly and you know, oh, he's inside yeah. of this spot. Yeah. So as long as they address that, it personally, it just, it's like, a, I look at it as like a quality of life feature. I don't think it really detracts from the experience. And you can merge it in a way. There's been ideas suggested with like, you know, you get like a videotape back after the raid, you know, you could like pay for it. There's ways to make it immersive. So that way it's not like, doesn't detract from the experience. It could like realistically add exactly. to the experience. So 
Yeah, like it has to be after the raid. Like that's definitely sure. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, it'd be cool. I'd like it. No, yep. I'd like it. So that's it. Like, was there anything else you wanted to add about Tucker TV? Any other bits? Like, were there any anything? I think I think we were pretty <sighs> comprehensive. I'm just like reading through other stuff just to see if there was anything else. But I think that's like mostly it. There's like a bit. There's a bit about PVE. Like you can you'll be able to wipe your own PVE. They, it won't wipe unless you want to wipe it. So, but they'll be a button for it, and they're going to be making it a bit a bit better and. A few random stuff like that, but like I think most of it were we've covered. I mean, the only thing I have, but I just I mean I don't you know uh, I don't want to like belabor on a you know beat a dead horse, but I did I did find it interesting, you know, seeing Nikita's behavior in certain moments, like this one in particular, Thernicast, when he someone asked about microtransactions, I think it was. Mm. Like they asked, well, you know, what are your plans for future mic- microtransactions? And you know, he was like, we are not doing microtransactions. And then, like, he, you know, he was like, it, it almost like he had like a bit of a smirk. Um, and then he like took off his glasses and was like, you know, okay, I'm dead serious. We're not doing, you know, he's like mm. making it adamantly clear that we're not going to make that mistake again. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> like, you know, good. <laughs> but um, yeah. I don't know. There was, there was like another moment where I can't remember the context, honestly, but he was it's a similar question. Maybe it was during this time, but his response. Oh, I, I, it was, I guess he was talking about like how he loves the community and things or like praising the community. And it just felt a little, I don't know, like it made me cringe a little bit and I can't really put it into words contextually why like it just maybe it just felt like i don't want to say insincere but it's like a weird i don't know it's just like a weird relationship aspect where it's like they're sort of i don't know it's it's like we are not the same you know you're like in it to make money which is like a fine and you know that's like a fine thing to do and we're like in it to like play a game and like entertain ourselves and maybe distract us from the realities of life but Mm. i don't know it's just it's just so weird i can't really i wish i had the context because that's actually it would be very helpful but anyways point being is it was interesting to see his behavior further because the tarkov or not the tarkov tv but the arena one was like all in russian if i recall correctly or Mostly, no, it was yeah. it was partly in Russian, but there was parts where he was speaking English for certain stuff, I believe, for the Q and A aspect. But mm-hmm. the actual tournament was Russian. anyways. But this is a more like traditional um, DSG, and yeah, I mean it's like the vibes were, you know, kind of okay. But like it's like I guess there's just a few points where it was like. You know, it's kind of like the elephant in the room, and then it like mm-hmm. comes up, and it's like you know the mood <laughs> changes a lot, and it's just very interesting to see how he responds. But it seems like yeah, he's like learned the lesson, um, and I, I I don't know. It just feels like maybe there's some, you know what I mean? It's like it's like I don't want to I don't want to like say outright that he's not genuine. And that, like, he's when he's saying he loves the community of the set and stuff, but it just feels awkward because of what's happened. You know what I mean? And like the delivery know, of know, it yeah. feels very awkward because of what's happened. You know, <laughs> I think that's. I honestly think that's good. Like, I think his his like just manner on this talk mm-hmm. of TV was was good, right? But compared to the last one when he was on that arena cast and he was talking, yeah. Like that was kind of in the thick of things, mm-hmm. and he was like clearly rattled. Yeah, he was like r- he was rattled, and I think too it was like he still sort of had his um, heels dug in almost. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I think so. Like he, Which he is, still this one's thought a lot he was different. right. Yeah, yeah, he still thought he was right. He felt he was like very defensive. Mm-hmm. Like, people were saying mm-hmm. stuff in chat, and he was like getting like visibly irritated. Whereas on this one, it was kind of like, yeah, almost, I don't know, like, humble is the wrong word. Like, as I say, there's not really a great way to describe it. Like, you just have to, like, watch it to see the way he acts. But, like, yeah, he was just kind of like, he acted in a way being like, okay, look, I, 
I hear you. Like he didn't seem like defensive, really. He was just kind yeah. of like, I've gone away and thought about it all, and we've now got a cool head, and like people yeah. are bringing stuff yeah. up, and we can kind of like the relationship between like the community and Nikita is like a weird one, right? Because it's like an amorphous mm-hmm. group of people. But he's like, can kind of like be sincere, but also be like kind of like joking way, like you know, this is behind us, and like wasn't that a crazy thing, you know? And we've mm-hmm. all like I've moved on and from it, and. I've learned the lessons and we're not going to do anything silly like that. And, you know, I get it. I get it now. And like, maybe I was too, you know, and he didn't say these things, but it, that's how it felt. Right? Like maybe I was too like dug in, too defensive. Mm. Um, so, but it was, it was good. I think like overall it was a, it was a good, you had a good manner on this yeah. one. Like, yeah, definitely. Kind of, kind of cracking jokes about the situation. Um, as you say, it was like, it was slightly awkward, but I think he diffused it quite well. Mm. To be honest, he didn't like either. He didn't not talk about it either. He could have just not picked those questions out of the chat oh, for, sure. for sure. In theory, so like he still did. Um, as Noko but, says in chat, there was one of the questions which was like, "How are you going to get your popular streamers to play again?" <laughs> Someone and actually said just, that. <laughs> yeah, and he and he read it out, and he was just like, "I'm not going to do anything like yeah special. I'm just gonna we're just gonna make the game. Yeah, gonna carry on making the game. It's whatever. Yeah, I would much rather." have this type of Nikita versus the other one. You know what mm. I mean? Oh, For yeah. For sure. But it, it, it's just... so close to normal. Yeah. It just... It's still... For me, it's just very interesting to see. Because, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, he is a person just like every, everyone else. But... And, uh... Yeah, I don't know. It's just... It's just interesting. But... Yeah. It, it's... I think the important takeaway for me is, like, we were able, us Tarkov gamers were able to like come together on a singular thing and it actually like was effective. You know what I mean? Mm. Like he, he may not understand, you know what I mean? Or, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe like we don't understand either, but this is the way things have to be. So that's the status quo. And then it's, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like it was a dub overall, even though it was like, a very shitty time, a blip in Tarkov for people. So, you know, yeah. for some people, maybe it was just a thing to like take a dump on, another thing to take a dump on Tarkov for. But I know like a lot of people were probably, you know, very upset, you know, like whether you're a content creator, or, like a diehard Tarkov, you know, I bleed Tar, I don't just bleed, I bleed Tarkov blood, you know? <laughs> yep. So, yes, the, all that hurt EOD people. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That was mainly it. Yes. So hopefully we can move on. Hopefully BSG can continue doing this kind of update because if they bring all this stuff, it's going to be really cool. Yeah. Just like patch 14 was, which was also really cool. As I said, it was really sad that we had that big blip, but here's what it is. Stuff happens sometimes and hopefully that won't, that kind of thing won't happen again. You never know. It might, but I'm just hoping it doesn't. We'll see. I'd like it if it doesn't. Yeah. I'm at... <laughs> so... Go ahead. I was just going to say, like, a couple of other, like, rando things related or not related. Somebody in chat reminded me about something that I actually am facing myself. There's a bug right now with getting Lightkeeper, if you haven't got Lightkeeper already. It's, it's something that I, sh- I didn't write down, so I'd like to mention it. You cannot currently get Network Provider Part 1 if you have certain quests completed. So what happened was they reworked Network Provider in the latest patch. Like, it was one of the things that they did and said that they change some of the quests they i don't know the exact like the exact list i think is now up on the wiki and um, but the two major changes is you no longer need peacekeeping mission and you also don't need tarkov shooter 7 i'm not sure i i need to go and actually look what the full list is i don't okay. like if you don't need lend lease 2 either which i haven't actually maybe maybe i'll just look maybe i'll just go and look. this is sort of a tangent I was looking at actually getting Lightkeeper because, you know, it ended up being important previously for other you know, endgame quests and whatever. So I was just like, endgame events, maybe I should get him, like if it's going to be detrimental later on. So apparently now you don't need... Yes, yeah, so because the only reason why you had to do the Vertex quest was because you needed, to, needed that to unlock Peacekeeping Mission. If you don't need to do Peacekeeping Mission, which you don't, and if you don't need to do Lend Lease Part 2, you now no longer need to find a Vertex. Lightkeeper. It was the, that was the biggest pain in the ass that stopped me doing it. 
Um, so anyway, so that's, that's no longer required. Anyway, but they changed it. And um, it's actually listed on the wiki. So they changed it. So those are the only two quests I needed left, right? So I didn't. I stopped doing Lightkeeper because of the damn Vertex. I couldn't be bothered. I didn't want to play Lighthouse anymore. And uh, so I stopped. So anyway, I've mm-hmm. got all the quests that are required for this quest. And I don't have provider. Do you know why? You're probably looking at the wiki, but they added <laughs> Chemical Part 4 as a quest requirement. Chemical Part 4 is one of three possible quests. The other two being Out of Curiosity and Big Customer. For those who remember, you have to go and do the thing and you have to give it to either Skier or Peacekeeper, sorry, Skier or um, Crapor mm-hmm. or Therapist. Yes. Because Chemical Part 4 is Skier's specific reward, uh, I see. if you gave it to either of the other two, you fail, big, you fail Chemical Part 4. And so therefore, Network Provider 1 will not unlock for you, ever. So BSG are aware of this and they're going to fix it, apparently. Yeah. Right now, I can't actually get into the Lightkeeper quest line, <laughs> which is kind of annoying. Yeah, yeah, it's unfortunate. <laughs> so it's unfortunate. So I guess they'll, they'll probably either make it Chemical Part Three or remove it, put another one in. I'd put I just make Chemical Part Three. It's not like Three to Four is really a big jump. But yeah, that'd probably be the easiest thing to do. Just move it back a quest. Yeah, so that would take them like two minutes. Yeah. Oh, Surely it would. Take. But, uh, but yeah, so it's, it's a lot easier to get without having to do some of these annoying things. Um, because now it's like <clears throat> they're all like relatively basic things. So fuel matter, broadcast part two, cargo X part four, chemical one. There was a problem. Courtesy visit, database two, gunsmith ten, house arrest one, lost contact, seaside vacation, the cult part two, huntsman forest clearing, and punisher part four. Um, someone in the chat said like you can probably get them at level thirty three in theory. So it's like a lo- it's a lot earlier I think than it was previously. Like getting to talk of shooter seven was like really annoying. One of the only reasons why I did the Tarkov Shooter quest line was to get to Lightkeeper. And uh, I did finally finish Tarkov Shooter Part 4, like, not that long ago, literally probably like a couple of weeks ago, because that's five kills with a bolty. But you basically have to get a headshot, because if you don't get a headshot, they run away. Um, so now you don't really have to engage in that at all anymore if you don't want to, which is nice. I'm like pleased about that. Um, and then the other thing, there's a, an, an event right now, um, which they announced after Tarkov TV. So well, I think all the bosses are on shoreline. There's a new quest to kill all the bosses. But if you want to go and kill the bosses, then you can go to shoreline. You could get your mm-hmm. capo. <laughs> I could. <laughs> I don't know. Did they have they added? I'm not sure if they've added the achievement yet. The capo. What, what achievement? There's a ch- like, like, an, achievement? like a yeah. There's I think there's going to be oh. a, there's a there'll be achievement for collector. I don't know whether that's actually in now or not. I I forget. If I think it might be. If it is in now, then you know. I don't know. Maybe there's, <laughs> maybe there's a yeah. You got you got two months. It was early August wipe. You know? I I almost felt like not having ever gotten Kappa with the amount of hours I put in the Tarkov is an achievement of its own. Like actively oh, saying no, nay to Kappa. <laughs> <laughs> it's been because I think because I think the goons are in shoreline too. Because what, what did you, was it? Just that one? Is, was it just the I goons? Think it's l- I think it's like maybe. I think it's goons plus like one or two streamer items. Like I think. Summit 1G mm. phone was one of elusive one for me. Apparently it's in now. So yeah, if you get the get the cap achievement, you can have it forever. Stay in church. Just saying. Once New Vegas, you know, once the, the, <laughs> the, the shiny luster of the honeymoon period starts to fade away, you know, you'll, you'll start looking over the garden fence at the other games that you used to play. <laughs> the long lost X will come calling back. Yeah. Mm. Pre-wipe. Just, just a couple of goon kills. That's all it is. Tarkov, me and Tarkov's relationship, you know, it's very on hot and cold. <laughs> all right. Once, once the wipe comes around, then she's, then she's red hot. <laughs> yep, exactly. Um, yeah. Okay, that's all the Tarkov stuff that I have. Yeah, I mean that's pretty much it. I, I, I guess one like thing I did want to mention was the Uzis. Um. Mm-hmm. I was just curious if maybe the so there's like two types of Uzis like this I guess the bottom one is a more older traditional model that you see in like Hollywood movies and and such and then the top one is a more more modern newer model mm-hmm. and specifically the smallest one I think is like a micro Uzi which in a lot of video games um they're typically secondaries 
So I wonder if this would be another like fully automatic secondary. Because I had to think about it. I was like, do we actually have any fully automatic secondaries? Like, oh yeah, yeah, we do. There's the Glock 18C. And then there's like the Sketchens APS. And I think that's kind of it. Oh there's, yeah, true. Those two are kind of it, right? So there's not like a 45 fully auto or anything like that. So I don't know. Just having another like fully automatic secondary would be pretty cool. Um, maybe it's like something. I don't know. It's just kind of cool to have like more secondaries. I really want the the Scorpion, the like Call of Duty, uh, older style, very like. I don't know, it has like a very aesthetic look to it. It's not like the modern Scorpion Evo that you may have seen before in various other mm. pieces of media, but like yeah, the very like older school one. I would love to have that either as like a primary or secondary. It's just very like nostalgic for me. Yeah, it's funny. Like the Uzi is like a funny one because I I didn't realize that it could be like you know an an actual like SMG kind mm -hmm. of like ne nearly a rifle kind of thing because mm -hmm. you know everything I know. We've talked about this before. Like, everything I know about guns comes from video games, like yeah. almost <laughs> exclusively, except for like three different weapons that maybe I saw in the cadets or whatever from like the British arsenal. It's basically everything else comes from from games and so like my first interaction with the uzi was probably worms worms armageddon or something <laughs> That's which so is great. like a yeah. micro uzi or whatever because <laughs> uh, it, it's like a it's like a you know machine pistol almost yeah in that which is kind of my that was like you know what i think, thought it was for the longest time um so yeah i don't know maybe that baby thing is like gonna be like mp7 that we like two slot you know without the mag yeah be kind of fun so, i don't know, see it'd be cool it'd be yep. cool let's have some More... extra options but yeah if it's a secondary, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, more options, more things to play with. Otherwise, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much it. I've uh, actually not done a lot of playing of um, New Vegas. I've done a lot of modding. <laughs> I went down God. some very deep rabbit holes. And uh, yeah, just, I don't know, just being very like particular about how things look. I was trying to... I don't know. I I think I like messed up with like weather mods and like visual stuff. So I was trying to like resolve that, and then in the process, no, I actually started with this one issue where like my my Pip Boy was clipping on my first person model. So it's like on your left arm. So mm -hmm. if you're holding a rifle and you're holding the front of the rifle with your left arm as you normally would, you can see it right there, and it's like clipping into my arm. I was like, oh, this is kind of annoying. Like I have to look at this. A lot of the time when I'm playing, yeah. you know, game combat wise. So I tried to like figure out what was wrong with it, look at fixes. And essentially, <laughs> what it was is one of the mods that like redone a lot of the meshes in the game made them more like optimized and like mm. less, less, um, uh, what's the word? Polygons, uh, no, triangles, whatever. Like reduce the number of, triangles let's say that it yeah does to make a object to make it more efficient you know because it's an older game and it's an older engine so um but i guess apparently that vertices thank you god you were <laughs> you saved my life here i was like oh what is that word i know it uh <laughs> so yeah apparently it was like an oversight or something maybe it's a bug i don't know so i like i could just disable it and use like an, a different one because a lot of how the system in you know, the modding works is like one mod if you know you it's a very like conflict resolution resolution type of thing so like you know mod compatibility is a very sketchy stuff you know what i mean it's mm -hmm. just like but anyway so i was like oh i could just disable this one you know model for the pip boy and then i'll use a different one that's you know has the fix or whatever but what if i just try to fix it myself so i just went down this immense rabbit hole of like opening up and <laughs> You know, here I got uh, Jacob from <laughs> last week. I was like, hey, can you do me a favor? Can you open this up in Blender and see what's wrong with it? Because I yeah. thought maybe, you know, it was with the tool the I'm using. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like the tool I'm using to look at it, it, it's not really like a model editing tool. It's more like assigning properties and tags and things okay. to a pre-existing model for the game engine to recognize and assign attributes to. So you could change like, the textures or you know you can move certain vertices but it's not really intended for that purpose you're, you know but anyways um 
and yeah, I mean, I learned some new stuff, but ultimately couldn't really figure it out. And maybe it was, I don't know, not 100% sure. So I ended up just <laughs> not entirely not. wasting eight hours, but basically <laughs> wasting eight hours. <laughs> I learned that this stuff is very complicated and games are, mm. you know, not easy to make. There's a lot of stuff required, but yeah. And just various other shenanigans. Like one of these mods, they were able to somehow, I don't even know how you do this, but implement real time reflections. Because the game uses cube mapping, which is like a very common technique where essentially, like, it, it, you'll see a lot in like uh, scopes, like the lens mm -hmm. of the scope. It'll have like a reflection. But it's not actually real time. It's just like a fake map kind of like baked into right. the scope when you rotate around. Whereas this is like real time. So it's like actually reflecting the world, like the, the characters and stuff. And it's like, it actually like looks surprisingly good. It's a little, it's not like ray tracing or, you know, super, it's, it's a little like choppy in the frame rate of it. Um, like the actual reflection frame rate, which you can scale that, but for performance reasons you don't really do that i mean this is a mm -hmm. you know game engine that was originally created in 1997 okay <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, it's an older engine but uh yeah i was just playing around with that and stuff because it's just like this is so cool like you can go into the model select the mesh and if it's like a model that has multiple meshes that makes up like let's say it's a gun there's like a mesh for like the base of the gun that's like its own category and okay. then there's like a mesh for like the barrel, right? So that I go into yeah. the barrel and then assign this flag for it, unknown 10, which I guess is like, you know, not, I don't know, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but the mod will read that when the game, you know, runs and say, okay, anything signed with mod, uh, unknown 10 property, assign this mod of reflections. And it works. And it's like, dude, this is so cool. See, I mean, yeah, it's just like a whole rabbit hole i i've literally probably played once this week and just been <laughs> modding and i just i need i'm gonna play i'm gonna try to put down the mods and just play the game again so <laughs> that was the update last week i think <laughs> it's funny and it's cool though it's cool seeing how this stuff works I'm, i can see the interest right it's, it's, yeah it's in it's interesting stuff and you learn stuff along the way and i can see why it's appealing for sure. yeah i might get the touch tinker if if this rabbit hole continues. I might end up trying to do like actually make a mod and publish a mod. We'll see. That'd be neat. I was gonna do one for Cyberpunk that never mm. got around to, which was just AI upscaling some of the videos. But oh right, which is like a mod in quotes. <laughs> As a, yeah, you just do yeah. it, and then people can use it, which is like yeah. okay, nice. Because someone someone had done it previously, but because of a major update. Cyberpunk 2.0, it no longer worked. So I thought, right. oh, this this can't be really this hard. You just probably gotta like redirect mm. the directories or you know, well, maybe something's a move. It can't be that hard. I have the tech mm. to do it, but mm -hmm. I just never really got fully around to it. Just enough to dabble into it and realize, yeah, this is yeah. a lot more challenging than I had anticipated. <laughs> yes, I can imagine. Yeah. And then trying to use AI to upscale it to where it doesn't look weird, you know? It's just like... Mm. And then at the end of the day, it's like, eh, this is only going to be on displayed on, like, a really tiny TV screen, and it's, like, you know, 2%, like, less than 1% of you're going to see it in the actual gameplay. Like, eh, why not just play the game? You know, it's just, like, yeah. you go back and forth on this stuff. <laughs> yeah, at least I, at least exactly. I do. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had like two. I had like two random things. One was quite quick, which is like talk of you one. The other one was about a reader breakout, which like might be slightly long. It's not like super super long. Maybe we'll do ABI. I'll just like I'll touch on the talk of thing just as a like footnote right at the end. Okay. Um. So like I I played the game again, and this is a reader breakout infinite, by the way. So I've I've been having like lots of weird performance issues, but I ended up fixing them. But I actually ranted to you a lot about this privately on discord just being like what's going on like what's happening and, and to be fair church did actually send me like a load of stuff to look at like a load of stuff. like i didn't realize that you could undervolt like your gpus for example like obviously i did that with my cpu not that long ago but you could do it with gpus too which I didn't realize and just like that led me down a rabbit hole of like testing stuff for probably like six hours or something trying to figure out why arena breakout was like 
20 to 50 fps on the in the lobby and um the long story short is i have no freaking clue what was happening and i ended up closing like i was doing like I was doing like CPU benchmarking as, as part of this one and, and GPU benchmarking is part of this thing. <laughs> and I just ended up like closing Chrome and a few programs. And I was like, oh, well, let's just, let's just check it again. Just see what happens. And it was fixed. And I reopened Chrome and some of the other stuff and it was still fine. And I was just like, I didn't change anything fundamentally. Like I'd, I'd already put the underclock, the, not the underclock, the uh, undervolt through before and had tested it. And it was like no different. I'd already tested it with all sorts of other stuff and it was just like randomly it all just started working again 120 fps on the lobby like you know 100 plus frames in game i was just like and all changed and all changed <laughs> so anyway so but i did a stream and there was like some interesting stuff coming up in chat about because there's a lot of people talking about abi being like it's kind of like baby's first tarkov kind of thing and i sort of mm -hmm. thought this at first as well but what's kind of i think that's maybe like unfair i think it's actually maybe like an unfair take on the game like it it it's simplified in some ways. And the mm -hmm. quality of life stuff is obviously very good. And like being able to get into a game is very, very good. But the maps so far, at least the ones that I've seen, they're quite small. And the game does seem to evolve primarily around PvP. Like mm -hmm. Tarkov, you can avoid PvP relatively easily. And the way to make money is like not really via PvP. But you can yeah. sell anything on the flea in ABI. So you can actually make like decent money. And ammo is like quite expensive relatively yep. to other stuff. So you can like kill people, take their stuff, sell all their ammo, all their gear, like even the powerful stuff. There aren't any flea restrictions. And I think there's other issues with that, but like that's not, not really what I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. I want to talk more about how like people saying basically the loot economy, and there was a Reddit thread on this, which is quite interesting, saying that mm. I thought that the, the Cohen to Ruble ratio was something like one to 10. But this person argued that they were more, it was more like one to three. But what's interesting is that what ratio? even if you like, like, like so... Park of Rubles is like oh, three Tarkov. times more than Cohen's. So like the same piece of armor within two games costs three times the amount in EFT, but the Ruble is a weak currency, so that sort of makes sense. But the issue is, is that the loot is like one to ten. So, so the stuff costs... So in, in ABI, the, a, loot, a piece of loot is worth one, mm -hmm. and, your armor, and you know, your armor is worth, I guess, let's say three but in tarkov your loot is worth like, a one slot loot is worth 10 but your armor is worth like nine or whatever so like the the scaling so it makes arena breakout like three times harder to farm money for equipment okay if that so makes sense because the equipment is more expensive relative to the loot yeah i, th I yeah. think i see what you're saying so like yeah the the loot itself doesn't sell for a lot whereas yeah. the armor relatively speaking, sells for more. Yeah, or it despite... sells for about the same as it does in EFT. Yeah. Roughly, like normalized. Yeah, exactly. But despite the fact that the loot is so much less valuable than it, than it is in Tarkov. It's kind of interesting. This and, is interesting. Um, Just wanted to quickly add, because mm. uh, Lost Light had is like a similar aspect to it as well. Very, like, mm. loot in there was not worth very much at all. That is it. That, okay, that's actually even more interesting. That's a That's a interesting insight so there's part of this which is Tarkov also used to be like this so mm -hmm. things like bolts and whatever bolts and whatever sorry my wife just um the okay. bolts and whatever are like not really worth it well used to not be worth anything really yep. but Tarkov's now moved to this full economy of everything's worth worth stuff because everything is usable now and there's like the hideout which doesn't exist in abi like tons of barters and blah blah. Oh, there there's, is there's no hideout. Arena breakout. There's no hideout in arena breakout. Mm. So I don't know whether it's coming. I'm I'm not really sure what their roadmap is, but there isn't one. And so the game is really focused around PvP and around the flea market and being able to buy everything. And so, sorry. Now I just have some qualifying yeah. questions. I'm gonna ask. Yeah. Can you buy quest items off the flea? No. So you do have to go and do the quest if you want to complete. You have to go like. You can like buy the keys to go to the rooms, but you have to pick up. They'll they'll be like. Um... Quest items I don't are think unique. so anyway. Yeah, like the quest items are unique, and okay. I, I'm pretty like... sure anyway. I, mean, I, could, I could actually be wrong on this because I don't know it in depth, but like they they disappear when you die. I'm pretty sure you can't sell them. Um, but there's also other there's all other difficulties, right? So the part of the way that Arena Breakout deals with this is that it's actually similar to a system that like I've spitballed with you like ages ago. Which mm. is about like different map difficulties almost, mm. and the reader yeah, yeah. has that system. 
So it's got the basic one with the loot not really worth anything. And then you've got the higher version, which is called Lockdown, I think. Oh, so it's the same map, but just like it's a the different same map, loot but it's a different tier, lo- different loot pool. And there's like a minimum gear score to get in. So it stops people just going in with nothing. So that, that defeats the hatchlings thing. And then there's like another version up as well, which is like almost like labs, but for every map. So there's a monetary hmm. like cost to go, as well as another even more higher increased gear score to hmm. go into the map. And it kind of, like, it's fine in ABI because there's not really any, like, law, so it doesn't matter. It's like a PvP mm-hmm. arena. But it's just interesting the way that it's all, like, all tailored around PvP, really. Um, yeah. And these, like, and the loot economy is, like, kind of tough. Now, the, the part that I thought was the most interesting about this, like, you know, there's reasons why, as I said, that, you know, it's similar to the way Tarkov used to be and blah, blah, blah. But there was a, an interesting comment somebody put on, on the channel while I was streaming, which we had to talk about then, which was about how these games, and this is why it's interesting that you talked about Lost Light, that these games are incentivized to keep the loot pool pretty stingy if they, int- if they intend to introduce microtransactions, you know, microtransactions yeah. to be able yeah. to purchase kits, which is available in the mobile version. Who knows what's going to happen in the PC version? We don't mm-hmm. really know. But it's likely that something would come. Maybe it's not going to be to the same extent because PC players probably won't accept that, I, I don't think. Like, I hope they keep it pure. I, I do. But if they do intend to introduce it in some fashion then yeah the dev is incentivized to keep the loophole pretty dingy <laughs> so that it's hard yeah. to run good kits because right. they don't people being too wealthy because otherwise they won't buy stuff so it's yeah it's weird like um <laughs> you know this incentives thing right they've got like uh an incentive to keep it tough to get people to buy right. stuff so it's like like a cynical person would say well all of these games are like that very purposeful mm. Not you buy all it in, of these in Lost games. Light, could you buy it? Yes. Could you buy gear oh, in Lost Light? When you say all games, you mean like extraction shooters? Like extraction shooter types, yeah. Yeah. Um, could you buy what? Like current yeah, you could like buy you know, trade exchange money for rubles effectively. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And in Arena Breakout, at least, if that system came to PC, then you could buy anything, right? You could buy literally anything. There's no Yep. There were no flea restrictions. You could buy anything you like. I was like looking through some stuff with a couple of, there's a couple of people in my chat who like have played a lot more than I have. And I think they played mobile as well. They like know what all these things are. And there's like, obviously like these things are usually, right? You've got like stuff is cheap and then there's the mid-tier stuff and then the good stuff. And then it's like the end game stuff is just like right. exponentially so expensive. Exactly right? like, how less, yep. And there's a helmet, which is literally just like, it's just class six. <laughs> just a whole head. Yeah. Visor. Like yep. everything, like it's insane, and it's like one hundred and eighty thousand coins or whatever. And like a basic helmet is like four k or whatever, and like a good helmet is maybe like eight k, ten k. Like oh, the wow. decent helmets are like twenty k, thirty k for like really, something really good. And this thing's like one hundred and seventy thousand. It's like insane, but like it's class six all over your head. Like it's it's mental. I mean, relative you can to like really, this sounds cheaper yeah. overall, but yeah, but you can like, but that's the thing with with the loot economy the way it is. Like one hundred and eighty k is like a lot of money, mm-hmm. and uh, so but you can like juggernaut up with that if you if you so wish so there's like there's even there's kind of like even more ability to do that um i think we've talked before like ages ago um with like arcs meta about like the juggernaut meta versus like the you know most in meta about like where that where that balance lies like mm-hmm. again in a game like that you kind of like you almost want people who if they're spending the money you don't want them to like die to armpit right so it's like oh you you, know, oh, yeah. you have the ability to protect everything if you so oh, wish yeah. oh yeah like it's 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 just interesting. Like I'm not saying they're necessarily <laughs> going to do that, right? Um, right. Like I I hope I hope that they don't bring any microtransactions in for, for like sure. pay to win, right? If if they if they can help it, and that they just go down cosmetics or whatever. But like, do I think that's likely? I mean, I do, I think I think no. I think they're going to bring in something. Mm-hmm. that will be pay to win, and maybe it won't go to the same full extent as on mobile. But I still think there will be there will be some stuff. I just don't see how there won't be. It's like their bread and butter, right? It's like. Tensor owned ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just the way. Uh, but that's that's smart too, so so who knows? Who knows? No, but yeah, I just thought, I thought it was interesting. It's just an interesting thing about like, yeah, but the incentives of the developer to like keep the game. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, I mean the, on that note we played Hell Divers last night because they had a update not too long ago, maybe like the previous day. Um and it was like a new event or whatever, and it was fun. But it was like actually very challenging, like so much so that I got really frustrated once. <laughs> I uh, 
what respawned and because of the weather conditions i could see and where i landed was like oh one of those. in the middle of like a hundred terminates right and mm -hmm. i got also because of the geometry and like just some un just unlucky how i was like i was um ragdolled and because of the geometry and the bugs like on top of me i couldn't get up but i mm. was able to heal myself still because i was only getting oh. attacked by like three bugs just because of the, the unfortunate events, I basically effectively just had my hands off the keyboard. Yeah. But it was just like so frustrating. I had no control over the situation. And like that was I hate those experiences in games where it's like you you have nothing you have no control, you know, it's just like awful. So yeah, I just got stun locked for like 30 seconds because I was like trying to heal myself and get yeah, it was it was immensely frustrating. But anyways, the point being is it was actually really challenging. And like we were talking about this because we actually played on level six, Giga, and it was really <laughs> hard on level six. Like Oh right. I mean, it was really hard. And um because you had to like defend Was it like a specific different was it like a new mission? Or something? Yeah, so it's, it's like, like really it's, tough. It's like a new map and the idea is like you, you gotta go in and take this black liquid and inject it into the planet because you're like destroying the planet or something right democratically of course and um the there's like three different uh these little like i don't know pumping stations that like drill down into the ground and you gotta protect it to like so it can and you have these like you bring you, you call down these stratagems that have the liquid the black goo or whatever and it's effectively a, a backpack a, a jump a jetpack Mm -hmm. um just like the one you get regularly yeah. but this one it's like when you do it it actually does a little aoe blast around you that can like damage and kill teammates and enemies as well and it's much like further and higher but the other caveat is and this is what you once you get to the objective you gotta like take it out and put it in there but the other caveat is if you your teammate gets shot if you shoot your teammate accidentally and hits the thing it blows up so and um, if you use it too many times, it blows up as well. Oh god, okay. So it's like it's a little give and take, but it was it was it was cool, right? And so you gotta like defend. You put the thing in, and then a bunch of terminates start swarming it, and you gotta defend it, whatever. And it was like really hard because they would swarm, they like spawn really close around it. And mm. if you shoot an explosive, it will damage the thing. So it's like it's just like this back and forth. It was really challenging, and they just don't stop coming like mm. throughout the entire map. Um like they just keep spawning, I guess. So if you can get overwhelmed like we did. But anyways, we were sent, you know, kind of like almost complaining about how difficult it was, but at the same time it was fun because it was challenging, but it was like this it sort of ties into ideas like if they I would rather the game be challenging than it to be trivial cuz then I'm just yeah. not going to play it after <laughs> you know, oh, I've seen them done everything, this is boring, mm -hmm. you know. So like there's a very interesting balance and incentive for the developer to make it challenging but also not trivial and also not so challenging that it puts everyone off you know yeah like it a can't very... feel like impossible yeah <laughs> there's a line and it's so thin and blurred <laughs> that it's so hard to strike it but when you do it, it's like everything clicks and it feels great mm-hmm I do, yeah, I do feel like they've done a pretty good job up until now anyway with most of the stuff. It's like mm -hmm. you start off and it's like five is quite tough and then like six and seven, you work up and then eventually you're just playing like nine every time. Yeah. Um, it's it's yeah. very, very cool. Somebody said um, in chat, like, why did the CEO step down for that game? For a very, very cool reason. So, Oh, wait, he um, stepped down? Yeah. So wow. He is not the CEO anymore. And he like posts all over Twitter. So he's like been pretty honest about it. He is now the chief creative officer he's the cco um basically he was like i want to spend more time looking at like weapon balance and less time doing like quarterly revenue reports oh that's cool so like and people were like posting the starship troopers meme of the guy who gets himself demoted so he can get back on the front lines or whatever and it's like <laughs> he's like that guy he's just like screw being the ceo that job sucks i i want to i, I want to work on l divers honestly <laughs> that's basically what he said that is I'm so glad because that's kind of been the main reason why we stopped playing is like some of the more recent updates, like the 
um, battle pass or whatever with the new weapons in them have been very lackluster and like side grades, but like effectively the same gun but worse. Like the new assault yeah. rifle that they released was like essentially the same as the standard assault rifle, but less recoil and slower fire rate. It's like this doesn't really do anything different mm. and it's arguably like worse. Whereas like some of the more earlier, like the Democratic detonation the one that had like the explosive sniper rifle that one like basically was like a side grade but like also was like different you know so uniquely yeah. different like the the grenade pistol actually is a great example like you could really do a lot with that because maybe you want to take stun grenades but you like oh man i really want a grenade so i could take out bug nests or yeah. the factories what am i going to do it's like oh i could swap out my secondary now i have the grenade pistol but then suddenly it's like, well, if I bring a sniper as my main, what am I going to use up close to defend myself? It's like, oh, I got to like juggle these different things. Mm-hmm. To make it, it makes it a lot more interesting. Whereas like, here's a vanilla gun. Here's a vanilla gun, but shoots slower and has less damage or like or, or has more damage. It's like, wow, this is the exact same thing, but it's a yeah. different flavor. It's not really. As, so I'm, re- I'm really glad, actually, that he said that because it's probably been one of the biggest deterrence for us playing is like the new stuff didn't really add anything and like some of the balancing has been pretty good um and i know there's a lot of complaints about balancing and i you know i i can kind of understand when we did it but point being is like i just want more interesting choices and more like fun ways to engage with the game because the game itself like yeah. the core is really fun and it's like yeah. very solid um but it can be very I don't know. Not. It's a good game, regardless. But yeah. I would like to keep playing it and have these options be more meaningful. So I'm really, I'm really pleased that he's he made that decision. That's cool. Like it's very to me, cool. that's like saying that he really cares about this aspect, or you know, this is like his passion project or whatever. Yeah. So I like that. Yeah, it's it's very fun. It's good. It's very good. Yeah, because I think he talk, he talked a bit about like most people complaining about. You know, in a PvE game, like you don't need to nerf everything. Like you know, you can mm-hmm. people can en- you know enjoy the power fantasy or whatever, and like have like fun stuff that's like powerful. It's sure, like, I can't. I guess it's hard though, right? Because if one thing's really good, then people just use that, and then the game's kind of boring on that basis. Even if you have options, right? and even if it's PvE, people will want to like they want to swap around to like figure out what's like the best kind of thing. Yeah, I, I did always feel that. I kind of people get like locked into the things that they know and like, and yeah. there wasn't enough like viable choice to feel like oh, I really should using x like wasn't necessarily enough there but i haven't actually played it for a while i haven't played it for a bit and we're, we're very like my my group goes like in real waves of you know like yeah. it just takes a couple of us to like be off busy or whatever and then we just like fall out of playing so like we haven't yeah. played like, anything together for ages now. we were playing like daily hell divers for like you know two months or something and then yeah. now we're just like we're, we're in that mode where we're just like don't speak like I, mm-hmm. it's like really weird it's really really weird yeah we, um, we kind of went through something similar in my group but so much it, we'd like tried pivoting to like a different game like overwatch but i it didn't stick like it didn't stick with me especially <laughs> this is just not for it but we did on that note of like coming up with different strategies and like whatnot i did have a crazy idea and i was like guys what if we all wore the electricity armor that's like makes it to where you don't take electric damage and we'll bring a bunch of electric electric items Mm-hmm. and weapons and because it will arc to different you know bugs and kill them and that way we can you know use these different items in the game because i was trying to and this is what i liked about it's like they gave us a a problem we had to solve right and it's like here's the problem you need to do the objective but also not and defend it without killing the objective so it's like what stratagems are gonna be able to do that it's like i can't use flamethrower because it's gonna burn the objective i can't use a napalm or like a airstrike because it's gonna blow up the objective so like we were using stuns a lot like the stun grenades the um stun yeah, stratagem like the mortar right but it was like you know it was kind of working um but we needed firepower as well so we all i was like let's try this idea let's see if it's crazy and it was crazy and fun at the same time because it was so fun because we you could like shoot a teammate and it wouldn't kill them because you get like 95% damage res- mm-hmm. resistance. But your teammate would act as a conduit and it would arc off them onto a bug. 
<laughs> so we were like hitting each other, not like taking minimal damage. We had the Tesla tower set up around the perimeter, so the, the it wouldn't arc to the thing. Like sometimes it would arc and hit us, and then from there arc to the uh, objective and damage it. But overall, it was one of these things where I'm like, oh my god, you guys, I'm so glad you agreed to this idea that I had because it was like a crazy idea because I've always kind of been the one in the group that's like no guys the Tesla Tower is really good it, you know just <laughs> just let me use it you know it's like like oh church your Tesla Tower is <laughs> killing me again <laughs> like I'm sorry <laughs> but yeah it was it was actually fun and like it kind of worked like we, we we did it it was yeah although there's also I'm sorry this is the last thing and then once you finish the objectives then the planet like shakes and then you gotta mm -hmm. go extract. Once you do that, all the I think they're called strikers, all the all the bird bugs, oh, the flying creatures. Shriekers? Yeah. Shriekers. There's like 50 of them in the sky that emerge. Mm -hmm. And it's so like cinematic because you like you gotta extract. You can't like they just don't stop coming. So you just have to like fight your way in and extract. Like it's it's a very fun experience. And I was like, uh-oh, guys. Small problem. We all have like electric shotguns, electric, you know, weapons, and there's these birds flying in the air. So it's like we can't hit them. It's like it was it was a lot of fun. Like, there might be a flaw in this strategy, but it was That's it was good. a lot of fun to do that. I'm glad we I'm glad yeah. we did that. I accidentally picked the one of the electric ones one time because I mistook it for another <laughs> weapon and just like sorely regretted it. I was like, this gun is so bad. Like the Yeah, I don't know. I think it was the shotgun. I was like, this yeah. thing just doesn't even kill like the basic but I had it against bots as well. I was just like this does not kill them this is so it, annoying it was rough early it, it yeah. got buffed not too long ago it's like yeah. 50 percent faster which is much okay. more usable but mm -hmm. yeah back then oh my god it was <laughs> certified the worst weapon yeah i was like wondering why just being like i i genuinely am useless here i'm sorry like i just <laughs> yeah i'm yeah. just calling in strategy i just can't fight like with my i've got four mags in the secondary gun and that's it mm -hmm. like that's the electric shotgun is like actually pointless for me to even try and use it. You know what? The the first time we played, um, someone used one of the new weapons from the battle pass that mm. was like the last one, and they were like, "Guys, I'm sorry, but I, I I want us to reset. Like this gun is basically unusable. Like it wasn't good for the objective either because it yeah. was like it was bait. You know the scorcher? I think it's called. It's like this plasma. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's quite it's like kind of like yeah. This one was like that, but like just objectively worse. Right. <laughs> so he was, and it wasn't it wasn't good for the objective because it could damn it if you try to shoot a bug mm. that's attacking the objective, it's gonna hit the objective. So he's like, we just we just want to reset. Like it's he's practically he's just like, yeah, that's fair. Let's do that, you know. And that's how you were feeling. So like, I'm sorry you had to suffer that entire match like that because I know I know that feeling uh. sucks where you just feel absolutely useless. Yeah, we would do. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was like get the people to the. It's like they extract the people one, the small mm -hmm. one that's like mm -hmm. really hard anyway. Um, yeah. Yep. It was one of those, <laughs> and I was just like, oh, like, God, so painful. I know we've gone, this is a long yeah, one. Yeah, it's then, a lot. I'm sorry. I went, took us down but, a different rebel. That's fine. That's, it's okay. I don't mind. I don't mind. Like in the evening, it's a bit less yeah, time pressure. But um, yeah, the only final thing that I wanted to say. So I'm like, I've put together this audio video. I'm like, still not sure exactly when I'm going to like release it because I'm like getting, mm -hmm. trying to get my timing and like do, do a video maybe about this stuff. Um, but <laughs> I feel like I've I've gone down like a second and a new path of madness with Tarkov testing. So I came to a very crazy realization was that after moving the GPU into the other machine to build a stream PC and all this stuff, I had the sudden realization that the stream PC can play Tarkov. Oh. And I was like, hold up, it can it can actually load Tarkov and play. And like the FPS is not g great, it's not amazing. I probably wouldn't want to play on it, but it. Is, is doable. And I just didn't really think about it, right? Because I've been slowly piecing together the stream PC and I was like, well, I have two accounts because I won that. So I have two EOD accounts and I have mm -hmm. my one and I have the old one that I won doing that like video competition like four years ago or something. Oh, yeah. And, um, and so I use that one to do hardcore usually. And I was like, hang on a second. I can use co-op offline and play against myself and I can test like random stuff that's like either difficult to test with people just because of coordination mm -hmm. um, but I, and because I was doing sound and audio, I was like, well, I could just like do specific things and then jump out and back in. Like and the, the beauty of it is like, I do actually like testing with people on Discord because it's just more fun. Mm -hmm. But inevitably you forget stuff and then you have to jump back and you have to like pull someone else in and be like, oh, can we like retest this thing? 
And like you have to get their side and like then you have to download it from you know google drive or whatever it's just like sometimes it's just <laughs> yeah. more like especially for like a little if you forget to do one test it's just like oh, can i yeah. do the video without this like oh do i really have to like go back and like it's one else anyway so that's like freed it up a lot anyway i found i had a a crazy realization that and i've like I've, this is like an untapped mine of of awesomeness i feel so what i was doing right and i kind of did this by accident i wanted to hear like both sides kind of at the same time like figure out like what was going on but i didn't realize how awesome this would be so what i've got right the second pc is like completely its own independent thing it's got its own mouse own keyboard it even got its mm -hmm. own headset because i was testing the sound with it it's the old headset that i used to use on stream and what i had i've got this headset here and i put both <laughs> headsets on at once so then now i can hear my one pc in my right ear and the other in my left ear from my pmc but this meant i ended up like i spent like 30 minutes running around customs because I suddenly realized, I was like, hold up, I can hear my other PMC like in real time. Mm -hmm. Like rather than just being like, oh, can yeah. you hear that? Oh yeah, can you hear that? Oh, can you hear it now? Like what does that sound? Going back, taking the recording, trying to sync them up, watching the stuff. That's a pain in the ass, right? Yeah, I can yeah. in real time just wander about and test stuff. And it was, it was fascinating. Really? Because you, you could just hear what you do. And like there was the, um, I've, we've actually got Omni Actual in chat at the moment. And like he did that video about headset directionality right there's this, like mm -hmm. 120 degree arc where you get your headset bonus um and outside of that like the same as if you're not wearing one kind of deal and like i know this to be true because i've watched that video and seen his testing i've never tested it myself because it, it's already been done but I, I hadn't quite realized the practical implications and how like stark it sometimes can be like if your character is facing the other way somebody can like run really close like much closer than i thought hmm. and you literally will, won't hear them there are no objects in the way you will not hear them at all and i think it's like it's i think it's maybe more stark now because we're so used to hearing people at like 80 meters and that's been right. brought down a lot right like it is a lot lower than it used to be it's like 60 something at most mm -hmm. but it's it's uncanny right because like i was hearing my other character running and then suddenly there was silence and i was like what and i thought it was to do with because i was stood around um I was stood around the pocket watch truck and I was behind that. And I was like, Oh, is this some like crazy occlusion thing? And I was doing, and then I was like running around, running around. And I was like, hang on a second. This is like, this, this is, this is everywhere. As long as I'm not in front and at the side. So I, I actually like, I need to test it properly, but there's like, there's loads of stuff like that, which like I've suddenly realized like, A, I can play against myself whenever I want. So I can literally just boot <laughs> up the two machines and just like play co-op offline and just test anything whenever. Yeah which is just like really freeing. And then the second one being like, I can test audio in real time, which is something that I never even thought was possible. And it's like so much cooler than I thought it would be if you just told me. It's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really interesting. Um, and just to like, cause like I can, I've got, but I literally have both keyboards in front of me. I've got them like stacked one in, one on top of the other now. So I can be like, <laughs> I can be hearing like Dorm's three story or whatever mm. in my ears, but I'm watching myself play. Yeah with the with my main computer but i'm not listening to that that client's audio i'm, I'm listening to the observer's audio and and play it oh, so i can, yeah, I can yeah. hear exactly what that stuff sounds like anywhere in real time i can just position the observer and listen to that that stream and then play with the other character like it's so cool it's so cool so like there's actually like i'm sure i'm gonna i'm gonna make a video about this like inaudibility thing because mm -hmm. i can like show it really well and i can also i realize i can do this in a video because I can set the left ear to one side and the yeah. right ear to the other side. So it's two separate things because I can record on both mm -hmm. at the same time and I can synchronize them up easily because I can just press the button at the same time and then I can have them playing. So you'll be able to hear what I hear. Dude, this is huge. Like, I'm so excited. Yeah. About it. I think this is I so mean, cool. I think you get pretty reasonably close to some good <laughs> stuff. Like, the only, like, you know, one factor would be, like, latency via... Like, I'm sure there's a small amount of computer latency, but mainly what I would suspect is, like, or be more concerned about is, like, latency to the servers, because you're both connecting mm. to a server, which, how much that plays and what that plays and is it relevant, I don't know. But otherwise, though, that is, like, really clever, and I, and I, wish, I wish everyone listening could have seen Giga put on two headsets. Is one headset covering one ear and the other one covering two ears while they're overlapping each other? It's just, like, it looks like... <laughs> Of like, yeah, it's like curse gamer <laughs> meme curse or something. Science gaming like <laughs> craziness. It's yeah, it's it's so good. It's so good. So this is really yeah, clever. 
the latency is much smaller than and I thought it was going to be. Okay, that's good. Like, you mean, like, I, uh, between you seeing you move and then the hearing the sound stuff? That's good. I was, I was quite surprised how low the desync was. Okay. Let's put it that way. I was very surprised. And I mean, yeah, it's like two clients to Western Europe. You know, I'm on the Western Europe server. Like, both sure. are like 30 ping at most. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, I'm, the, both computers are going to the server and then coming, going to each other via BSG's server. So it's not like, you know, I'm not, I'm not on LAN with myself because um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm playing co-op offline. Because you can't set the weather in the solo offline and all this stuff. Like I, could, I can now set the weather to whatever I like, you know. Like, it's so annoying those features aren't there in, like, the personal offline mode. Mm-hmm. Like the features are so limited compared to having two PCs. But you obviously have to have a second computer to make that work. And until now, I haven't had one. But, yeah, like, the latency is, like, really low. Um, I was surprised. Because I remember, like, CZTL's testing about desync and leaning and that kind of stuff. And uh, back in the day, it used to be quite high. But I was like, it does actually seem pretty small. I was, like, almost interested in, like, maybe trying it as well um just to see because yeah. also you could test it i could you know i could put both pcs onto us beast or whatever and then test it there test it on europe there's like there's so many things i can check now they're like yeah. so much easier to test at this stage that's cool i mean cool. it sounds like you got some viable new content to explore in general science to do which is always kind mm. of fun yeah and it's just like it just, yeah, it just gives so much more flexibility and opens out so many more. Uh, like every time I'm thinking of doing something, yeah, because like some of these testing videos I do put off because it's like, again, I enjoy doing the testing with people right. in Discord, but it's like organizing like three or four people together. Yeah. Yep. I have to try and think beforehand, like make sure I have everything. Like, okay, this test is going to need this. This test is going to need this. You bring this, you bring this, you bring yep. this, you bring this to make sure I don't waste anyone's time. Cause I, and also, or mine, because I don't want to sit there all day yeah, loading yeah. into raids for, oh, we forgot to bring the, you know, this plate, so we have to go back and get it, because it takes a long time to get into PVE. Whereas, like, now I can just, like, set the stuff up, press go, and then I'm, like, doing something else, writing scripts or making lunch or whatever it is, and come back, oh, both clients are in the game, okay, we'll, we'll play now. Um, I had a couple of those where it's, like, I'd lost a piece of footage, one of them, I don't know, how, mm-hmm. I don't know what happened. I, like, one of them I didn't record. Uh, one of them, I forgot something. So it's just like, I had to like reload in multiple times. It like takes a long time. But if you're like doing other stuff, like I was making the thumbnail at the same time. So it's like quite efficient. So I was like, yeah, this is, this is good. This is good. So here's me worrying about what we're going to do for the next two months. I'm basically just going to wear two headsets <laughs> for two months. <laughs> that's, that's cool. I'd be interested to see out. what conclusions mm. you come to. And Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that sounds like a really interesting uh, thing to... A rabbit hole to go down sounds like. <laughs> it's a new the sort of possibilities tool in the box. with two PCs. Which I do actually now have a capture card for, but it's unfortunately this one I'm getting, I've, I've been lent. It's only 1080p. So I'll have to go and get a proper one that does 1440p. But I'm going to test it and yeah, see. I'll test go down the audio. Like it. That's got its own audio rabbit hole of like, yeah, you know, yeah. how do I get the alerts onto this computer mm-hmm. so i hear them and how do i get my mic and my game sound onto the other one through the audio and whatever i've got like there's a couple of guides i'm gonna try see so it's gonna be a lot of testing but once i've got it down then i'll know what to do and then i can spend the big bucks to get the you know 4k 60 pro or whatever it is for pci card and then then i'll be able to do 1440p so what uh you just put the old gpu in the other pc right and it's just got so it's a, some old processor from... So it's an i5-6500. Uh, i5-6500. Like old. Old school. I mean, it does sound old. It's and a 3070. <laughs> and an RTX 3070. It's like the most mismatched PC ever. But the, the 3070 <laughs> is doing all the grunt work, right? Like, I'm doing yeah. all the encoding on the 3070. The CPU is just there to, like, babysit stuff. It's not doing it a lot. So it's actually ended up not being that necessary. And I've tried it and it works. It works. It streams, no problem. Because again, it's not doing any encoding the CPU. I'm just using MBank. Um, I was talking to Chip and Wobber about it actually, and he was like, oh, you just need to make sure that it is actually PCIe 3 mm-hmm. because that's like it's an old machine. So it was a it was a I5-6500 and a R9 3 uh, sorry, 580. That was what was in it before. That's actually now behind me up on the shelf. Um, and so that's that's been replaced, but it's like yeah, it's old. But I I looked it up and it like it is PCI three, so it will you know it's got the 
bandwidth to be able to do the nice. things it needs to do with with the RTX card, which is which is cool. So launch. So that's in, probably thirty seventy. Let's see. This is the Intel. I I don't know if this is like the series or specific mm. CPU. But according to Intel i five Wikipedia, uh, launched in two thousand six, eighteen years ago. Mm -hmm. It's old tech. <laughs> Certainly old oh, tech, but it works. Yeah, I mean, it works. It's only quad well core. Yeah. But like, yeah, all, all it needs to do is just do a bit, a bit of stuff, right? It's like OBS is open. It's not you know, it, the encode's being dealt with by the GPU. Um, the most that it was being used is when I was using Teleport to like move the uh, image from one to another. But that hits my own CPU too much. That's why I'm doing this capture card mm. thing. Like that was taking to to receive the image. Yeah. <laughs> from my other PC was taking like 50% of the CPU. Wow. Just to bring teleport in via OBS. Even with the card doing all of the encoding or whatever. It was just like, I was like, that thing's starting to struggle and all it's doing is taking a 1440p signal in. <laughs> it's kind of amazing how much Overland. tech has come from like the mm. past 20 years. and Very much so. Like even the, the Fallout engine, like it's only like 15. I mean, the game was like 15 years old effectively, almost. And it's just kind of crazy to see, like, dang, like, games didn't. <laughs> uh, games were kind of pieces of crap in terms of like performance and aesthetics. I mean, tech's come a long way, you know. Like, don't get me wrong, you know, I'm not, I'm not like, obviously, it's gonna look bad, but mm -hmm. I don't, you know what I mean? It's just like, it's kind of amazing. And now it's like getting to the point where, you know, given another five, ten years, you probably won't be able to play that game at all on newer PCs unless it's like, somehow rigged up to do so like mm. it's like DirectX 9 is like backwards compatible through like Windows game mode and like various things but like uh, you know like eventually it's probably gonna be phased out where like DirectX 9 is no longer gonna be supported right so like how are you Maybe. gonna because like the older games too I think like um you know, like Doom ish games, like you, you know, they have to be like, because originally I think they were like, what, Doc, DOS only initially, and then they had to get like different versions I honestly, made. I don't know. I, I know very little, <laughs> but that's my understanding is like, it's kind of unfortunate that like tech and like software specifically and like compatibility, you know, it's like, don't want these like pieces of media. To be like, you know what I mean? It's like different than yeah something that's like, like a movie, for example. Like they get remastered to like DVD and Blu-ray mm. and stuff. Like some of these other stuff, like gaming, because it kind of feels like they're like, like harder to sort of keep that going, isn't it? Like you you end mm. up having to you end up having to like run a virtual machine with like XP on yes. it or something. Like yeah, only way to like, like actually do it yeah. much harder, mm -hmm. less accessible and stuff. Anyways. So yeah, that's all interesting stuff. I think that's uh, the cast. Unless you got anything else? Nope. I think we've waffled on for long enough. <laughs> I, mean, it, <laughs> I enjoyed it. I hope everyone else did. It's good, good cast. Good to uh, discuss a lot of the Tarkov stuff. Interesting mm -hmm. to see what, how things play out. I mean, I feel like I have to eat a shoe now because they're gonna <laughs> remove or keep the Fountain mm -hmm. Raid. Uh, non founded raid is staying there. Yeah. It's like, how I do I work? Stuff. It's yeah. so hard to talk about, honestly. Every time it's confusing. Founded raid is no more, except for questing, but under these conditions. And, uh, yeah. But, anyways, I didn't think they were going to do it, and they did it. So, yeah. Kudos. So, then anyway, I'm excited to see what that looks like in the new era. Match 15, eh? We'll see. So, yeah. August, early August. Early August. End how we started. Early August wipe. Clear your calendars. <laughs> Summer wipe's always slightly smaller anyway, but yeah, that's cool still. All right. Thanks everyone for tuning in. And as always, we'll see you all next week. Catch you later.